Put. model railroaders and welcome back to the second section podcast where we're just regular folks talking about model railroading i'm your host andy dorsch and joining me this evening is my co-host mike ostertag mike how you doing good how are you i am doing well um it's, it's been, been nice been, eh? it's yeah the weather has been fantastic really here nice. i did spend some time outside yeah, me too. Um, working, working on my other hobby. Got my boat all set, um, and yeah, now I'm bracing. Now that we've d- gotten all the spring activities done, we're bracing for the impending snowstorm. That's polar vortex. Yeah, it's headed our way. So no, it ain't happening. Yeah, it ain't happening. It'll get cold, but the rest, no. Nope. I forbid good. it. <laughs> you for so it so it shall be. Mike has spoken. It, I have. Against... I have sp- They haven't been right all year. They've been right once. I don't know what uh, weather station you're watching, but they're getting it. They get her pretty close. Oh, they um, haven't been even yeah. close. Anyways, um, so we had a we have a great show tonight. Uh, joining us all the way from Australia is Gary Rumming. Gary, welcome to the second section podcast. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Thanks for having me, Andy. Thanks for having me, Mike. Appreciate it. No problem. Thanks yeah. for having. Or thanks for coming on. Um, <laughs> Jeez. I, I have to say the the pre-show uh, production meeting last night that we had was outstanding, and um, it was it was great to to get to know you and, and put a essentially a face to uh, what we see on on social media. And um, I was wondering, uh, Gary, if you'd be so kind as to. Uh, give just a, a bit of an intro to our audience uh, for those who don't know who you are and uh, kind of what are your interests in model railroading, um, kind of how you got started, and then what things do you do, um, you know, on in terms of social media and, and stuff like that? Yeah, well, uh, I got into model railways back in my early teens uh, when I first got a train set for Christmas. Um, from there, it developed into a model railway. Uh, then you get into the late scenes where you're out there, you know, with your cars and the girls and the hobby sort of tends to disappear for a little while. Then after that, uh, I caught up with a mate of mine who was slot carrying in his garage and I noticed that he had some old model railway under his slot car set and we banged our heads together and decided to build a layout and we carried on from there. So, um, the hobby's been with me off and on over the last, I'd say, 40 odd years um yeah so it's been there a long time and i've enjoyed it when i'm into the hobby itself um of course you know i ended up getting married having kids and the hobby disappeared and my son he uh he fell in love with thomas the tank engine on on tv so i built him a layout and my my modeling came back to me to what you see behind me right now so yeah it's been great um love the hobby uh, I've modelled anything from Australian New South Wales railways, the transition period, right through to British in different scales, from HO to double O, which is a British scale, four millimetres to the foot, yeah. right up to uh, British O gauge. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. So, so you're, so you 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 not only you know b- build your, I guess layouts and and, and do your modelling um, at home, but you also share them. Um, I guess, you know, not, not just on social media, but you go to, um, what you call them exhibitions, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. O- over the last probably seven or eight years, I've taken a little layouts to exhibitions. Um, most of them are, are shelf layouts. Uh, yeah. So they're, they're small, they're portable, they're lightweight. So, uh, basically I can carry them in under my arm. You know, I don't need a truck. I don't need, you know, a horde of, you know, uh, helpers to set up the layout. It's just quite simple, quite easy, and that's what I enjoy about the shelf modelling or the shelf layouts. You know, they're small, they're they're a u- unique style of modelling, I think, and uh, very portable. Yeah. So, how long have you been taking um, taking layouts to exhibitions? So, you say you've been in the the hobby for about forty years or so. Have you been doing that the whole time, or no, have no. you just as of late? 
Yeah, just oh, probably the last eight years, I'd say. Yeah, okay. uh, going back to about what would it be twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen was my first exhibition. Um, I went to a little exhibition. I got invited from that one to a larger one. One of the, I think it's, it would be the second largest exhibition in Sydney up here, which is put on by the Epping Model Railway Club. And uh, the little layout that I took, Lyndon Ford, that happened to take out best layout of the show. So I was quite, oh, quite fantastic. surprised. Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's wonderful. And then, um, so not only do you share your your hobby with with those at exhibition, but you also can be found um, out in the the internet and on social media, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I'm on quite a few of the uh, Facebook groups. Okay. Um, yeah, HO Scale Shelf Modelers is is fantastic, and yeah, I got got a shout out to Paul Cassar there. Um, he runs a tight ship there, and it's a brilliant <laughs> yes, brilliant group. Um, platform one, which is on my shirt here. Okay. Uh, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've I maintain the uh, platform one MRC Facebook page, but we've also got a forum as well. So uh, it, it's a bit different to the Facebook page because you can actually share your layout build there, and you know from start to scratch. And we have all the helps, tips, techniques, and all that that we share as well. Along, so yeah, it's a it's a great community. Yeah, I I follow this one myself, and um, just the the level of, of modeling that that you see, and the and the I guess the the I guess the want to share the information with the with the members is really kind of outstanding. It's it's a really good community that you've built here. Yeah, it's slowly increasing. Um, I must I must admit what we done. The actual forum itself, where you had to go through a data change or upgrade it, uh, basically before we were running out of room on the on the server, and we yeah. needed something new. So we we changed servers and everything, and uh, we used Facebook there to keep all our members in touch with what's happening with the development of the the forum itself. And uh, I've just kept the uh, the Facebook page going because it's a it's an avenue to bring people across to the forum itself. So on on the Facebook group. Um, how many members are you up to nowadays? Oh, the Facebook group. We probably probably around the 450, 500 mark thereabouts, okay. I think. Yeah. And then the yeah. forum? The forum, we're about at 1,100 members. Holy smokes. Yeah, so That's it's outstanding. Not yeah. yeah. That's a and they, good they, forum. Yeah, I was going to say, they, they share all the different modeling. We got a lot of O-Gage models over there on the forum, um, Platform 1. So, yeah. and, and they're guys who actually build their own locomotives, you know, buy the brass kits and... And they do tremendous work. It, it is impressive, you know. Yeah. And then we got the modelers who do engage as well. So, and it's a great variety of modeling from Australian, Japanese, North American, English, you name it. There's a lot there to cover. Oh, yeah. that's outstanding. And you, so for for the folks that want to follow along, I, in the show notes this evening, um, in the description of the of the the YouTube uh, live stream here, I did put links uh, to Gary's uh, social um groups and and you also have a youtube page is that correct yes i do yep uh gaz 3801 okay and, uh, i generally put out a video monthly um if, if if i remember or i can get around to it so yeah sometimes i just get too busy and uh with that i cover the actual layout build as well as other hints and tips that i that i employ on the layout so from yeah. scratch building to painting and weathering and yeah, quite quite a few things in there. Plus plus some of the real life uh, railways out there that we have here in the, in the country. So oh, so I'm, you do a bit of rail fanning as well? I do do a bit of rail fanning. Ah, cool. Yep, and exhibition reports, what have you? Yep. So yeah, try and share it all. Yeah, this is so. I was uh, um, truth be told, um, I I watched the last video where you talk about the. Your, your current layout and just the, the detail that went into the little screen that's in the thumbnail here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I highly recommend that uh, everyone go check out uh, the Gaz uh, 3801 channel and, and take a look at um, how Gary walks through um, this scene on, on his downtown spur. It's really, really cool how, how this little, I guess, company, you could say, tells a story. Um, I, especially with, I don't know when you add that little detail, the boat and stuff, it's, I don't know, kind of cool. Um, and then some of the little details that you throw in, in some of the other scenes I thought was really interesting and really brought the, the layout to life. So highly Jeez. recommend everyone checks that one out as well. So 
Yeah, so just a couple of notes here. Uh, the CNW Mondovi line, Paul Scott August says Gary's dead end street scene is fantastic. Um, and here's Timmy's Timmy's miniature weathering works says, yep, fantastic groups to be in. So, um, yeah, it's just a lot of people uh, singing your praises there, Gary. I yeah, appreciate the comments. Yeah. yeah. And then, <clears throat> so we're going to talk about your layout tonight, uh, the current one that you're working on, and then we'll also go through a little bit of your history. But um, just to, to tease the people um, that are that are out there listening tonight, what are you currently modeling? I'm modeling my version of uh, the downtown law in the FEC uh, okay. in Miami. So what I've done there, I've I use Google Maps to uh, use it basically as a tool to to reflect the model itself. Um, the picture that I've got, which is behind me here, uh, you can see the pink building there, which is based on. I think it's family and sons down in down in uh, High Leah. So mm -hmm. basically, from from the pictures that I I take off Google Maps and all that, I use that to actually build the building. So I've gone through across a whole Miami downtown spur and picked little bits out of it to build the layout. So it's not a complete rendition of the the line. It's just the pieces I like that I've pieced together. Mm. Mm. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So that's. Uh... That's a pretty good intro uh, to the group here, Gary. Uh, Mike, did you have anything to add uh, quick? No, not yet. I'm waiting for the really, really good stuff. Yeah. I got loads of questions yeah, coming so up. In, in the pre-production <laughs> show, there was uh, there was much uh, amazement as to some of some of how Gary does does uh, some of his modeling and some of the materials he uses and, and this, that, and the other, um, but. I do want to I do want to give uh, an intro to our section crew who's joining us this evening. We have about 85 members in the chat tonight. Um, so welcome section crew. Um, I, I've been thinking about this um, question all day and it's going to lead into our first segment, which is going to be hashtag not sponsored after this. So if um, give us a shout out, say, hey, how's it going in this in, in, in the chat tonight? But if you could have a manufacturer make a local locomotive for you, your dream locomotive. Oh no! What would it be? Oh, why do you have to open this can? Put it in the chat and wow. uh, say hello. Here, and let us know how you're doing. So, if you could have a manufacturer, don't tell us what manufacturer it'd be. We don't care about that. Tell us what the locomotive would be, and and throw that up in the chat tonight. I want to see. I want to see what. Um, what what all comes back? So I'm going to pass this question to 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 Mike. Um, if if you could if you could have a manufacturer make something for you, what would it be? A GP28. A GP28. Yep. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Atherton already makes a pretty good quality GP35. Yeah. I've actually already talked to Jim Wiggins about that. About hey, you know, it's it's a simple. It, well, tooling is never simple, but I mean, it's just a design change for the long hood. That's the only thing. And it's just the top. The rest of the long hood is is just uh, the same as a, uh, as a GP35. So it's, it's really a simple conversion, but they're all over the country now. Really? They used to be, oh, there, there were only 26 built, but for mostly for Illinois Central, a couple for, uh, uh, oh, what was it called? Kansas, Oklahoma, someplace down there, but ended up being Mopac. Uh, and now they're kind of spread all over the place. And it that to me would be the model I'd like to see a GP28. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, something that hasn't been done, you know? Right. So they're running about, out of models. <laughs> what about you, Gary? Um, any Anything that you'd just love to see a manufacturer come out with in terms of a locomotive or maybe? oh well not so much a locomotive but i know down on the uh downtown spur there's a particular wagon uh it's coded lsex and it's a like a bathtub hopper for scrap metal and what yeah. i'd love to see one of them oh there you uh, go yeah so just something quite easy not so much a locomotive but um well, if I had my choice, I couldn't think of anything right now, but I'm sure there'd be a couple. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Am I, should I start writing these down? <laughs> yeah, you may <laughs> as, want to. 
Oh, okay, not you well, may want really. to, and, and then uh, I'll just I'll throw my uh, I guess my two cents into the ring. If uh, if um, we we could ever get ourselves a Fairbanks Morris H sixteen sixty six train master. Why did um, I know that was going to happen? That would be the that would be the end all be all, and I would I'd sell my house to buy every one of those locomotives in the Chicago Northwestern scheme. So let's see here. People in the chat this evening, Tony Dixon says, how about an S-scale GP40-2 CP368 Productions or 368 Productions says an Alco S6, something no one has done. Dota 1 Ops, an N-scale SD70 Ace in Frisco. Um, Robin Talukdar says... CNGP9 RM in O and S. Denver or Chicago, Denver and Northern says uh, GP30 phase one. Roger Moses is here tonight. O scale Milwaukee Road box cabs or an MP15. Let's see here. Darren Hassett says Coos Bay Lumber Railroad SW1200 with dynamics. Mike Shanky just says, Hey, hey, Mike and Andy, how you doing? Good, Mike. Um, Let's see here. Uh, why are you naked? Four says Illinois Central SD40A or an Amtrak P30CH. Eric Coglin says an Aust NSW8060. Garrett and N scale reads train stuff. N scale Alco C425. Justin, man after my own heart. All body styles of the baby train masters. Um, Bill Kenkel, HO scale RS1. Andrew Ho oh, Le, Levergetta, yeah. a French train locomotive 030 uh, T Pingley, used by the CFBS currently in Bay de Somme. Um, let's see here. Boomer Dioramas is here this evening. He says EMD SW900RS. Peter Tillman, the NS Brick. Sure. Uh, Mike Shanky says, I take the locomotive from uh, Bay Beach and put that in my backyard. That doesn't oh, count. <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, an S5. How are we transitioning into freight cars here? I don't know. <laughs> is that what's happening? Yeah, uh, Jim Donahue at- says the Baldwin Shark in uh, D and H colors. Um, oh my God! And there we go. Center beam lumber. Oh man, fifty foot high cubes. Uh, here's a GP forty C- eleven caboose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, see, and uh, Paul Scott August says an SW six hundred DCC and sound specifically for the Chicago Northwestern. Joseph or uh, Patrick Lavely, uh says an EB eight. Let's see, QNER or QNE Railroad uh, says uh, uh, Montreal Locomotive Works uh, RS23. Ah, be patient. There may be one of those coming mm. if you pay attention to. Uh, uh, oh, what is the heck is the guy's? I just talked to him here not too long ago. He had he had one sitting at at uh, Minnesota when he we were at the the convention thing or the what do you call it. Oh, Ralph Renzetti would like to see the Burlington Zephyr train again. Don Iris is here this evening. He says, how about a GE U18B in the correct color scheme? And then Brandon says, hey, all. Welcome, Brandon. Good to see you again. So welcome, everyone, to tonight's show with Gary Rumming. We're going to be talking about super um, super shelf layouts that, that he's been doing. And then um, we're also going to do some hashtag not sponsored this evening right away. And then after Gary's done with his presentation, we're going to go into what's on the workbench. So if you have any questions for Gary this evening, fire them away. Um, We'll get them into the chat and get them up on screen. So that way we can get uh, them questions in front of Gary. Again, remember, keep model modeling or railroad related this evening. Keep it civil. Um, we do have moderators out there this evening. We don't want to have to kick you out of the chat, but we will. So let's keep it civil, everyone. Um, and every everyone enjoy the show. So we're going to segue. We're going to take our first commercial break this evening um, and go 
over to the Greasy Meat Hands Band and get into our first segment this evening. That snazzy guitar riff means it's time for hashtag not sponsored, which essentially we like to talk about some of the new product releases or stuff that the manufacturers in our hobby are coming out with that get us excited. So, Mike, I know you wanted to bring this back around um, on the heels of the Rocky Mountain Train Show, right? Yeah. A lot yeah, of there announcements were, as a result there, of that show, right? Yeah, it seemed like that was kind of the place to be this spring, you know, <laughs> when it came to to being um, for new product announcements, you know, and which is good because, you know, it's kind of the middle to end of the modeling season, so to speak, you know. So it's uh, good to have some things on the horizon that we, yeah. we can be excited to see, you know. Yeah, so you have a, a couple of uh, homegrown products um that you wanted to share and then we could probably talk some of uh some of the bigger vendors in the hobby yeah, yeah okay well. let me let me uh let me let me do this high product high quality production stuff first thing yeah. i'm going to talk about is uh can you all see that no yeah yeah we can yeah. okay sue parts um and uh they they actually produce a set it's non-operating but they're 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 wig wigs and they make them in Ooh. s scale they'll make them oh, that's great they make them in s scale they make them in ho um and yeah, i'm not sure what other scales michael is willing to uh to print them in but wow. they're beautiful but they're beautiful i've got a couple of the s scale ones sitting right here i'll show you here in a second but they're you know, I think with a little bit of work and some ingenuity, they may be able to become functionable to a degree. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to have to maybe use some, maybe a little bit of black magic or something to try to get it to work. But so, I think, it, they, Gary, you might know a couple of modelers that delve into the, I guess, the animation world. Um, was it? Um, Marty Jenkins, and then there was uh, was it S Scoop? I forget. Um, guy who who uh, likes to essentially do animations with figures and stuff. Yeah, I couldn't answer that question, Andy. Yeah. Uh, sorry no, to put sorry. you on the spot there. Yeah, no, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the other thing is, is they also came out with, and this is more for people in in around. I, I don't want to say the Midwest because these really are local. I mean, if you're Upper Peninsula of Michigan, Central Wisconsin, uh, you know, Central Ontario area, Northeast Wisconsin area, they came out with these Algoma Central gondolas, and these things are gorgeous. Um, I wish I I wish I was an HO skill in order just to get one. Yeah. I mean, they're absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, hop over to to Sue Parts. Uh, it's SueParts.tech. Okay, is is their web page? And it's Sue S. Lori McLean. Sorry, that the 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 fellow that uh, the key animation modeler. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, but but these guns, you could use these guns anywhere for anything really but these are they're just they're specifically from the algoma central uh 60 foot cars that hmm. they use for pulp service but pulp wood, there's right? yeah pulp wood but there's no reason somebody couldn't order these for pipe loads or whatever you wanted to put in them so uh go and definitely check this out he's uh mike does a great job with mike with paul's this grove, right? mike paul's grove yes yeah. Uh, he's a super good guy, and uh, you know, um, I'm gonna stop sharing here for a second and hop over. Here's what is this is the S scale down a little bit. Uh, you know what? I should have there you go. Yeah, I should use the other camera, but so those come with the decals in them, then, huh? Yeah, it comes right with the decals. The only thing it doesn't come with is a pole, 
you yeah. have to supply the pole. But yeah. that's 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 well, easy peasy. That's right? the easy part. Yeah. Yeah. So and there's not a whole lot else to them. Just a little cleanup and the and and stuff from the uh, from the supports and painting and putting it together and you've got yourself one heck of a crossing protection for for your railroad. Uh, they look they look really sharp. I've seen uh, they are really really sharp looking. Um, yep. now the other thing I wanted to share here okay. and bring up this is specific for S scale guys, uh, and. Let's see if I do this right. There we go. Ben Central. Ooh. Ben, ben Truesdale. Uh, he's the gentleman that has made the mm. Pullman Standard 4750 covered hopper and is currently, I, I, I think he's still looking for a bigger printer to be able to do these as mm. a regular kit pro production kit, so he's not doing it on his own. But... He has also come out with this as a another car, and it is a two bay Pullman standard 3000 cubic foot uh, covered hopper. These were primarily used in like limestone service, and they were they were the sister car, the two bay sister car to the 4750, and it they're. Again, uh, he's he's actually sending me one to uh, do a review on, hmm. and uh, so I'm going to be doing that. And and I tell you what, I couldn't be more excited about this car in particular. Love the 4750. Super stoked about that car. I can't wait till that's ready to come out. But this 3000, this is a really really much needed car also in S scale. That um, because even though there were only I want to say eight railroads that actually had them there were a ton that were made of yeah. conrail conrail had a whole boatload of them santa fe had a bunch of them um you know there's there's a, a list of other railroads that some private railroads that had them but if you're gonna like some limestone service or sand service or something along those lines these cars are still out plying the rails right now today yeah. and and uh you know, another really, really cool. Again, no actual production date on these, okay. but I wanted to give him. I wanted to give him not yet, but I wanted to give Ben his 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 ten seconds here because this is something that if 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 this comes out the way I'm thinking it's gonna like the forty seven fifty will, these are gonna be game changing type cars for for S scale. These are really 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 cool cars. And his kits, he's made some modifications uh to the kit uh especially where the, his connecting points are on the cages and but it, it like I said, it's going to be uh it's going to be a beautiful kit and I can't wait to see exactly how this one all comes together too. You know, it's really interesting how some of these cottage manufacturers are, are essentially filling that void for you know equipment and um it's you know like for example with the uh the the sue parts um and and stuff that mike does uh, mike paulsgrove does i have uh, a couple of his um gondola pulpwood gondolas and they're you know for for a 3d printed uh kit they are right there with the injection molded in terms kits in terms of details and um, so maybe the, the bigger manufacturers might want to take a note here, um, and, 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 you know, pay attention to what some of these cottage, uh, industries are doing. Cause they're, they're filling a big gap for us. I know, I know they're very popular, um, and they sell out a lot of their stuff. Yeah. And the, and, and the thing is, is, you know, like you said, they fill a void, but they're also one of the, one of the other things these guys are doing is they're also drawing more attention to some of the finer details that the major manufacturers sometimes want to overlook. And I know today that there's a lot of really high detail stuff that goes into their things. Sure. But sometimes a variant is just not enough to be able to make a production run out of. So the cottage guys can go and say, well, I'll just make 50 of these. It's no big yeah. deal. And then, oh, I need, oh, I got orders for 200. Well, okay, I'll 
I'll make another 150, you know, and, and then there is no, especially with the 3d printed stuff, right. you don't have, you don't, the one benefit to that is well, two benefits real quick. The, the, the major benefit is the fact that it, it is the fact that the technology keeps getting better and better and better and better with the printers yeah. at home. Right. But the other thing is, is you don't have with 3D printing, you don't have any of the tooling costs that is associated with making an injection molded piece of of equipment. So it's a lot easier to go into a computer and make a change on a drawing and then spit that back over to the printer and boom, now all of a sudden you got a different variation and it it might have taken you an hour. To make that change and there's no tooling cost whatsoever and now you got both of those files saved and you can pump out whatever one you want whenever you want yeah desktop and, manufacturing is i think it's going to be a force to be reckoned with here especially in our hobby i mean gary you you use 3d printed items on your and your modeling don't you yeah i sure do uh i buy a lot from uh well, a fair amount from mini prints anyway to detail yeah layer. Yeah, and uh, 3D printing that uh, uh, Bernard's doing at the moment, it's fantastic, you know. I mean, yeah. uh, a lot of our members on Platform 1 are into 3D printing too, and, uh, yeah, it's incredible where the hobby's going in that direction. It's fantastic. It's just amazing how these these small, small items um, can have such a, a high level of fidelity, like the little animals that he makes. It's just it's incredible there's hardly any you know resin lines on it at all it's, it's amazing that, that's right i've got a few of these little gas meters and uh in ho scale they work out to be i'd say half an inch long by almost a quarter inch high and the detail in them is is phenomenal yeah isn't that fantastic i mean 10 years ago you never would have thought that possible you'd be carving away at a little block of whatever just to make one you know and yeah. and and what i the other thing i can see this happening now is manufacturers are going to no longer stock parts they'll send you a file and say that file's good for two prints of x number of parts and it'll have a a, a, like a what do they call that gary uh like or andy what what do they call that like a like a kill like it's only good for a certain number of prints i don't know and then all of a sudden it terminates itself or it's not accessible anymore it's it's uh it'll have a termination type deal in it so you have to buy that file again from them in order to do it so you know it's it's really you know i i just wanted to give those two guys uh, you know some some love here because it's it it really is cool the stuff that those guys are doing and it's welcome you know like sue parts those crossing gates those things were all over the country they weren't yeah. just they they were all over the the Midwest especially, um, you know. And, and I'm very just learning ancient. about them right now. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, they were everywhere. I think the I'll, last one in Wisconsin just got taken down here uh, two years ago, maybe. Yeah, now I'm gonna have to go and. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I'd I've, have to I've got, go and empty my wallet now. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got a few friends in Australia here that do a bit of 3D printing, and um, yeah, it's it's just just great, you know. Um, I mean, there's that many uh, sources you can download free uh, files from ST, I think the STL files, and once you've yeah. got them, that's it. You know, the world's your oyster, isn't it? You can you can print <laughs> out what you want and what you need. So, fantastic. Yeah, that's outstanding. Any, do you have anything else for us tonight, Mike? No, not right now. Uh, okay. We'll get into some of the more, the bigger, the big guys here. As well. Yeah, let me, I guess uh, I'll, I'll bring so, bring up something real quick once. Um, I know we had talked in the pre-show about um, scaled trains um, and their new release, right? The, looks like the Trinity 82 foot um, 7883 reefer car. Those things are, I'll tell you something right now, from personal experience, using those, having to deal with those things in real life, yeah. they are monstrous. Yeah. They are, that is a big car. <laughs> yeah, a I mean, they're car. cool looking, right? Um, oh, yeah. For, for a modern day reefer. 
Um, and, you know, just again, the this is the rivet counter line that Scale Trains is, is bringing out here. And I think they're doing three different BNSF versions of this. But again, this is going to have that high level of fidelity that you can expect with any Scale Trains line. Again, um, you know, they're, they're not sponsoring us at any rate, you know, any any point here it's just you know we know them to be a high quality manufacturer so yeah. it's very exciting to see this car coming out cool thermo king um you know the the cooling unit there on the end that's yeah yeah and the other thing that i thought was was the level of piping that they have for the train line on the ends yeah is just that's just crazy the way they, yeah. and that's the thing that, that there again, that goes back. I mean, their attention to detail or doing all this thing, the guys like Atherton and skill trains and, you know, Rapido and some of these other guys, they, they don't miss a beat. They're taking a, they're really coming out with some very, very high quality stuff. Yeah. Thomas Chris says, uh, they're a you know, warehouse on wheels. wheels. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> God, that's, I tell you what, that's a you can put a lot of cheese in one of them cars. And then Darren Hassett says, "I'd hate to be the guy that has to fill all those Thermo King cooling units." Yeah, <sighs> I. Um, yeah, and with sound would be cool. That's for I, sure. I I think they. I'm not sure if they are coming out with sound. That would be kind of neat if they did, because they're going to have a so so much of a different sound to them with that Thermo King on the end. Than a regular mechanical reefer would, you know. So they do those things kind of. I mean, it sounds like a truck. It sounds like a truck, right? It sounds like a truck. That's what they. They're, it's the same unit. It's just a slightly larger version of the same unit. So yeah. Then Ralph says here that the uh, the coupler pockets are very different because of the overhang as well. Oh yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Mike Mike Slater says yes. Sound option. So that's gonna be yeah. cool. Okay, and then I did have uh, one other thing um, that I wanted to bring up, or at least we wanted to bring up um, as a group here. So I'll, I'll go ahead and share my screen again. Athern decided that they're going to come out with a bunch of new things um, over the course of um, at the Rocky Mountain train show. And I think, I think Jim Wigan had his uh, Athern train Tuesday, and they talked about a couple of these items here. Um, one of which is a re redo of the SD40 T2, so tunnel motors. And he's has some, and they have some uh, fantasy schemes in that. Really? Yes. So let's take a let's see if uh, if I can pull this up here. Uh, let's see. We'll do the view all. So they have the Rio Grande there. That's a common tunnel uh, motor scheme, and then we have um, Southern Pacific here. Looks like these are the Genesis line too, if I'm not mistaken. And I think we had, I thought I saw Burlington Northern in There's here as well. Burlington Northern one. That's the one I was talking about. There, there yeah, it is. This right one right there. here. This one looks pretty sharp here. That's actually, if they would have ever had them, that is a sharp looking engine. Yeah, that's pretty slick. Um, cool looking locomotive there. And again, that's going yeah. to be with all the details that you can expect. And I know that they've also done retooling. I think we mentioned this in a prior show um, of their F units as well um, coming back. So that's going to be interesting as well to, to see them. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, some cool products coming out from our, our main vendors um, that are out there. And it's it's going to be interesting summer for sure. See what it's else gonna comes be exciting, up. I think. I think it's gonna yeah. be really exciting because I don't think anybody really knows what these guys have up their sleeve quite yet. And I think there, there's gonna be some Iowa scaled engineering. We had them on the show. Yep. Um, um there's yeah. their wheel squeal thing. Yep. Okay, I just talked to Scott Thornton here. And I think uh, he's in the show tonight. So Scotty, yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm bringing this, that. I'm gonna I'm bringing this up, like it or not. <laughs> uh, it's uh, their wheel squeal is getting closer and closer and closer to yeah. being a thing, and I t that again, especially well, it doesn't matter what kind of layout, but for little shelf layout guys, that wheel squeal thing is gonna be slick. 
it's gonna put yeah. an added dimension to the opera to your operation it's just gonna sound neat it's gonna in, like immerse you into what you're doing a little more and then there's sound what the heck is the name of that i forgot what the name of there's there the sound man no uh the sound conductor yeah the sound conductor the yes. sound conductor that's right. getting closer and closer to coming out um the squealer the squealer it's called <laughs> holy cow uh, yeah. i i would have liked to have been in that meeting but okay <laughs> anyhow <laughs> buy a bunch of squealers get it's, a squealer I, get a squealer uh yeah, get a squealer so you know um i from what i have been told uh they are uh they are planning on having quite a display for this uh down at st louis this year so if you're going to st louis the rpm the rpm in st louis this year oh. i'll be there for sure uh you know hit hit up scott and and michael peterson and nate and 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 go check out that the squealer and the sound conductor and all the stuff that i uh, iowa scale engineering's got they they and there's more products on the horizon so yeah sounds like uh sounds like a lot of people are looking forward to the squealer product so oh, it's gonna be so cool dude <laughs> yeah i can't i can't wait till they hit because i'm gonna get uh get a handful of them as well so, yeah <laughs> gary um any any products tripping your trigger these days um from various uh, manufacturers that have been coming out or just uh just taking it all in Oh well, if my wallet was big enough, there'd be plenty. But uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. That, that's there just you go. Um, look, at the moment, look, I, I peruse the the different manufacturers and see what's coming out and all that. But uh, at the moment, you know, going down this FEC route, I'm just sort of concentrating on that at the moment. So okay. yeah, look, I've I've got a lot more motor railway as as you're well aware of, and uh, there's there's always something out there that sort of tickles me fancy. But uh, whether I whether I need it or want it is it's the case. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's a really good segue, uh, Gary. Um, so bringing in your FEC layout, why don't we get into the, to the meat and potatoes of the program this evening um, about what it is that, um, that you've been modeling and, and what's behind you there um, on, on your, on your picture. Yeah. Well, right behind me there is uh, the first modules that I built. Uh, okay. It was orig originally going to be a eight foot, so what's 96 inch by 12 inch shelf layout that I could take to exhibitions and have a fiddle yard off the end. Yeah. Uh, like a three road fiddle yard that I could interchange the frames with. Um, basically that's gone from what you see there, eight foot long to 26 and a half feet long. Holy um, cow. But <laughs> I, I will say most of that is only 12 inches wide. Yeah. Uh, and I do have a peninsula section on there, which uh, which is round about 16, 17 inches wide. So okay. the whole whole layout's an L shape, uh, yeah. with a peninsula off one of the one of the L's anyway. So before we get into the pictures um, and 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 the track plan and start mm -hmm. um, dis discussing um, all all those fun bits that you're going to share with us. What was the inspiration, or why? I mean, so you're you're in Australia, right? Why the why the Miami um, the Miami what? downtown spur? Yeah, why FEC and why FEC? Like, well, uh, you could say two words: yeah. Lance Mintheim. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah. So just blame him, right? <laughs> just blame him. instead of just blame instead of blame Heath, blame Lance. Yeah, Hashtag that's it. Blame that's Lance. Right. Yeah, look. Uh, <laughs> I when when I, when I first got into the North American modeling, it was with my son. We built a layout and all that. And uh, then yeah. when I built this thing, I thought, okay, what am I going to build? I do like the industrial spurs. Um, it it offers a fair bit, you know. Um, so I went I went searching and looking around and come across a few YouTube channels and what have you. And uh, one especially Tolga East, uh, mm -hmm. Tolga East Coast, brilliant channel for. Uh, chasing the FEC, and uh, that's what inspired me to to model the FEC. Uh, it was just simply that, and the great thing about it, as you're probably aware, most of uh, that area down there is flat. Yeah. So building baseboards, building the scenery is quite easy. Yeah, I bet. Yep, so, so we do have a question coming in from the chat right away off the bat. So 
Uh, Cameron White asks, um, as you're modeling an American railroad, does it take a while for you to get an order for any equipment or models from the USA? And is there any process or any problems uh, with the process or available? Uh, thanks, Cameron. Um, nothing at all. Uh, if I do pre-orders on locomotives or rolling stock, there's not an issue there at all. Yeah. Uh, generally, you're looking, you know, just standard uh, US Postal Service to Australia, you're looking about two weeks to, so 14, 14 to 18 days, or about two to two and a half weeks to land something here in Australia. That's uh, not I'm bad. Not, that's no. not too bad. I must admit, leave, leaving leaving the US, going from the retailer or the or the warehouse to the plane is pretty quick. The plane across to Australia is pretty quick, but once it lands here in Australia, there's your wait. So, oh, really? <laughs> yep. Um, it's the local guys. That's oh, what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's being delivered by snails. So uh, <laughs> snail mail. <laughs> snail mail. That's right. Yeah, but but it's not too bad at all. Everything you see on the layout behind me there, uh, every piece of rolling stock, I have purchased from the US. Really? Yep. That's awesome. So, so yeah, it's. Uh, and I, I tend to buy in bulk. I won't buy one or two items. I'll, you know, if I'm going to buy a couple of wagons, I'll buy six or seven and package them sure. up and send them off. You know, I mean, postage to Australia is not the cheapest thing. And if you're paying private courier uh, like DHL, uh, you can almost, almost, yeah, probably, probably put on another thirty percent on top of that, on top of the normal postage cost. So, yeah, yeah. Do, so, do you have a big? Do you have a big uh, difference? I don't think we've ever asked anybody from like australia this yet but is there a big difference between the shipping companies as far as post or like shipping when it comes to that stuff do you like do you is it better to just wait until you have 10 of something like you said before you ship it over or is there I mean, yeah look i must admit the funny thing is there it's it's not so much the size of the box that comes down to the weight yeah. uh there's oh. been times there where i've uh thrown Say seven uh, freight cars into into the order, and you go you go to the checkout, you go to shipping, you see what the price is, then you go, oh, okay, that's not too bad. I'll add, add another car anyway. You put that on, and straight away it jumps up, you know, twenty US dollars. Yeah. So yeah. you just got to, you know, I, I sort of meter it out. You could say um, just to see where I'm at and and see what the postage cost is. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So so with the the current uh, FEC. Uh, downtown spur that we have here how many mm -hmm. how many different locomotives um do you have that uh for that layout okay i've got two gp40 2s yeah and two two of the new athen gp38 2s oh yeah so yeah. you got a couple I've got got a couple and uh, i do have a little bit of csx that i can throw on the layout and a little bit of conrail so i can spice it up a little bit if i want to run conrail i can run conrail <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it, it it's I think it's one of those layouts where the structures or the buildings industries around it is pretty universal. Yeah. So, so I, I can can blend it. I can mix it up a little bit. But uh, generally, generally, the FEC is predominantly what I run. Yeah, that's cool. So, so we're talking about okay. So that that covers the the inspiration and and the the equipment purchasing uh, piece. So, let let's talk about the development a bit. Um, so you 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 mentioned earlier that it started from uh started from basically a, a a module and now it's expanded into a full-blown layout and yep. i wanted to maybe dive into that a little bit um so what i guess what was the i guess catalyst um that that got you to to go through that and then how did you kind of how did you morph your track plan or your your whole layout to accommodate this, I guess, uh, upscale, so to speak. You could say the room I put it in. Um, yeah. Okay. Originally, when I started building this, uh, I could fit it anywhere, whether it was a spare room. Uh, at one stage, I had it just to the left of me at the moment uh, against the wall, so it was sort of out, out here in the almost a lounge room. Um, yeah. and, and that, that was great, but I thought, no, I can't always have it here. I need to, need to put it somewhere. So another room that was my modeling room that had a large table in it, the modeling bench, um, uh, another layout stacked up on shelves, even higher. Cause I have, I do have a few layouts. Yeah. Uh, I've decided to, you know, chop up the old workbench, get rid of that, 
move a few things around and I've actually built this layout up on some shelves so it actually sits about 53 and a half inches in height from floor to, oh, wow. to the to the uh, height of the track um, which is great great for modeling on it's easy for me just to reach over and do things in front of me um, and it's great for viewing as well so mm. I've, I've moved the layout there and I thought okay I've got this extra space now what can I do so I, I designed come up with a track plan I use any rail to design the track plan where you can put there all you your, put all in your parameters it's a great size, program et cetera. it is cool it's fantastic yeah um I'll, sh I'll share a couple of photos yeah you get you guys yeah. in the chat want to see some photos <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's good I, I may have missed this. Have you ever visited the area that, like, personally visited the area that you model? No, uh, but I'd love to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on yeah. over. Andy and I will meet you down there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I said to my son, he's he's really into the NBA. And uh, yeah. he goes for... Uh, uh, Milwaukee Bucks. Book. Uh, uh, Brook, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, oh, and, uh, Nets. Yeah. yeah, and I said, well, it'd be great to go over and see a game. And I do know your season starts in October and finishes in April, roughly. Yeah, and hurricane said, season. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and uh, I just say to him, look, if we ever get over there, you know, it'd have to be January because we don't want to go at the end of the season because you probably won't be able to get a ticket to a, to a game. And you don't mm. want to go early in the season. You want to go mid mid season, I think. You know. So I said, look, if we do maybe January 2024, uh, we can pop over there. But I said to him, what we might do is fly into Miami and then catch the train up to up the, oh, up, up the coast. So, yeah, you know, make, make it a worthwhile trip. And I get to see a bit of Roa. He gets to see his basketball. We get to see a bit of the countryside along the way. And I think it'd be great. Yeah, it looks like uh, Don That's... Iris has given you an invitation there as well. Yes, I see <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. We'll see. We'll see, see how we go anyway. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll just I'll just bring up some photos now. So okay, just bear with me. Yeah, you bet. So um, it's just uh, let's see here. Uh, there we go. I'll add that to the stream now. Okay, so what we have there is the way I go go about the design. So I basically use the AnyRail program there and designed the different track plans. And I think about how I'm going to run it. Do I want to have a run around where I can run the loco around and send it back, what have you, rather than just, you know, shunt in, move a few wagons around, switch a few wagons and leave again. So that's, that's basically the development of what you see behind me on the big screen. Yeah. So yep. you, let me jump in with a question here mm -hmm. real quick. So, when when you start your planning process, your your focus is operations. It is. It's operations. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's really cool. Yeah. So the first plan there, uh, the top one, um, quite a simple thing. It's basically worked off an Ingle Nook principle, you could say, uh, where you got a couple of industries there, and basically the middle track is your is your through line. So. On that particular plane, the fiddle yard would be to the right. So most of these layouts, the fiddle yard would be to the right. So the bottom plan is what I currently have, uh, or the bottom two. So one one's without, you know, a few uh, buildings thrown in and what have you. And so yeah, it's a uh, it's a nice nice sort of change. So I'll just go on to the next photograph. Yeah, and then so before we do that, Paul, or Gary, uh, yep. sorry. Um, I did want to ask a, a quick question here. So overall, what are the size of these layouts that you're designing here? Just to reiterate that. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, 96 inch by 12 inch. So it's eight foot by one eight foot. Eight foot by one foot. Yeah. Eight so by one. All right. Eight yeah. by one. Yep. And I've actually made it in two four foot long sections. Uh, when I get into the nitty gritty of the photos here, uh, there's one there that shows how I've hidden the hinge points in the layout. So okay. if I wanted to, I could actually pull the first module out that's behind me in the in the screen here, um, yeah. and basically flip it over on top of itself. So it's only taking up a square foot by four foot in the back of a car if I want to move it. Sure. Wow. Yeah. And, so. And then Chris Bell says, "What program did you use there?" Uh, that is any rail. Any rail. Any rail, yeah. So yeah. most of this, uh, for a layout this size, you can download the free uh, version. Yeah. Uh, but I, I have gone out and I've purchased their licensed product as well. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's fairly inexpensive, isn't it? Uh, fifty dollars US, right yep. around there. That, that's about right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I have designed quite a few small layouts just using the free version over the years, and uh, because you get to use uh, fifty pieces of track, and you're probably aware that any rail has anything from Athen to Atlas to I think there's Shinohara, Walders, Pico, you name it. It's got yeah. all the major major brands in there all their what we call the set track right through to your prototypical sort of pieces of track as well yeah that's very yeah it's a cool it's a very cool tool to use and yeah, you can throw the different scenic elements and in, in there as well so you get yeah. a really good feel for it okay sorry to interrupt there gary no no you're right let's see if we can go on to the next photo i'll just stop sharing that one or i'll bring up another i don't know why it wasn't moving on there Yeah. So that's it's interesting that you, you start off with just a basically an eight foot by one foot. Um and then and then the whole premise is, is based for operation. So that's that's mm -hmm. cool to go in with that. You know, some people may just look at it from like a, a straight up diorama or just re you know, trying to recreate a scene, but I think it's interesting how you're attacking this problem, not you know, to actually run trains, um, which I think is is really cool. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Um, all, all of my layouts that I build, it's all about operations. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I get a kick out of the operations, so uh, I, lo I love doing it. So uh, yeah. yeah, it looks like uh, Kaylee Fay is here from Germany, and she says that any rail is a fantastic program. Uh, I used it for my layout too. So staying up late. Having a few cups of coffee with us, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's pretty late in Europe right now. Let's see if I can get this up. Yeah, let's see what we have here. Oh, okay. This is always my favorite part of the show. Here we See, go. he that fits. Looks he fits yeah. right in. the The quality of production. He's a he's just, a regular. He's here. a natural. <laughs> he's absolute natural to this. I think we said that during our pre production show. Yeah, he's actually spot on with the rest of us here. Yeah, so I mean, stuff. so it's great. So this is. So what are we looking at here now, Gary? Okay, so what we're looking at here is the basic framework that I build on. So it's only a lightweight pine frame, okay. laid with. Yep. Uh, the, I think it's about one and a half by three quarter inch pine framing. It's about six mil MDF, then a 30 mil layer of uh, the insulation foam. I have framed the edges in so you don't damage the foam while transporting mm. and the track goes down. Basically drill, drill through the, uh, through the foam, through the baseboard to do all your wiring to drop your droppers in. Mm. How, how, how expensive, how expensive are your, your bench legs? Oh, they, 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 are, they are the expensive part, I must admit. Uh, I just I, looked at that and I'm like, I just finally realized here a minute ago, I'm like, those are those look like dining room chairs. Exactly, exactly, yeah. That's, that's a, a great that's, way of doing it. But that's the beauty of a small layout like this. You can just pick it up and move it anywhere you wish. So. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, it's it's... That basically is essentially the layout, the track plan there, and you can see the timber blocks on it um, is where the hinge points are. You'll notice yeah. that the blocks are up high. That's so when it does fold over, any structures or anything won't touch the opposite mm. end when it when it oh. flips over. So you won't crush them. You won't nice. crush them. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Well. Uh, okay. So mo moving on, this is a little bit of scenery work that I've done on the layout. All those buildings that I've got there are all made out of three millimeter or one eighth card. Just your normal book binding board. Okay. Um, so yep. stop. So stop we have right to stop. There. Yep. <laughs> stop. All right. We need to let the chat wrap their head around this. Yeah. So what you're about to see guys is incredible. So we're so let's let's hit that point again. So you you said that you, the buildings that you're using or that you've constructed, they're made out of cardstock. That's correct. 
Yeah. Yep. Okay. This, I mean, first of all, it, it's it's fantastic. We do have a, a question here. I'm going to apologize here, but I'm going to filter these in, Gary. So from Humanity Junction, um, he's asking, uh, is this a module for a bigger layout or is this the entire layout? This, th this particular module here was going to be the layout before I extended the layout. Um, I can actually pull this this section out of the whole layout and take it take it with me, uh, take it to an exhibition. So I can fit a fiddle yard on either end, uh, just in front of the rail box car here. That I could actually add a fiddle yard to there or down the far end there as well. So mm. I can run a train. You can run trains through the scene. You can bring them in. You can switch in and out of the industry there. So basically, the industry is a food industry. Mm. So um, mm. it's got one. It's got five car spots or six car spots there. So you can, you know, you've got the corn syrup, you've got the uh, the middle building there with the awning on top. Uh, that is basically your fresh produce coming in and the building down the end with the two roller doors is, is your dispatch, basically uh, packaging material going out. So it, it is fun operating. Um, if you've got to get the corn syrup cars out, you basically you've got to move everything else out, bring, you know, swap them dig in, out. switch them out, yeah, dig them out and move stuff back in. So, it, yeah, it's not, not bad. As, as a standalone module, it's great fun to, to operate. So, he, and, and Heath has a follow-up question here, Heath from Humanity Junction. Um, he said, so, so from the previous photo there, how many days from track only to this level of structures and scenery? Uh, the structures there normally take an afternoon to knock up uh, to, to actually, you know, cut, design, build. Um, as they're, they're, they're square structures. So basically I just cut out the walls individually, individual sections, just glue them together. Um, I, I tack them with a little bit of super glue to start with, then the rest is like your PVA or carpenter's glue, which actually binds the cardboard a lot better. Um, so really the, the painting is probably the longest part, the painting and weathering. And, uh, I've got to shout out the boomer for his techniques of painting and weathering. Um, you know, I've, I've stolen, well, actually I borrowed quite a few of his, uh, <laughs> techniques. And, uh, okay. We, we can yeah. say steel here. That's okay, yep. Gary. Yep. <laughs> yep. Hey, look. What, what Boomer does is fantastic, and I really appreciate his channel. So it's been an inspiration yeah. to my modeling as well. So thanks, Boomer, if you're listening. I know you're listening there somewhere. So, yep. Um, yeah, so the painting, as I said, it's, it's probably the longest part of the actual construction. Putting it down and doing the scenery there, overall, it's only a couple of weeks. Okay. So this one, this one is, how, again, we're looking at one that's about a foot by eight foot. Yep. And from track to, to scenery was how long? A couple of months or a couple of weeks? A couple of weeks it would be, yes. Holy I only work, smoke. I, I probably only work on the layout maybe two to four hours a week. Wow. Um, so, you know, getting in there, painting the rails. I just use the airbrush. I paint all the rails I go through, yeah, paint there all you the go. ties, what have you. Uh, but you see a lot of modelers, they put the ballast down first and bring the scenery in, where I'll go and put the base scenery, the soils down, the, you could say the sub scenery first. I mm -hmm. lay that down first, then I ballast, then I go through and put the grass and the weeds and what have you in. You know, It's a bit, a bit like decorating a cake. You know, you start off the cake, then the icing, then the candles. So yeah, right. I, I, I yeah. do the same thing. Um, basically like start, it. you know. Yeah. To do what do what do what how nature dictates, <laughs> you could say, and uh, yeah, and I build a build build the layout from the ground up. Yeah. So with so with so with the structures being made out of cardstock, mm -hmm. do you ever? I know typically on a layout you don't do this, but with these smaller shelf layouts, it you really could do this. Do you ever interchange the industries to kind of switch things up a little bit? Or do you always have, like, leave this as, this is the scene, this is the way we're going to do this. So, like, if you wanted to make this particular module, instead of food industry, maybe a paper mill of some sort or a, or a, some kind of other industry, could can you do that relatively easily because the buildings are out of cardstock rather than regular styrene kits? Oh, I think I think you could do that. It'd be quite easily. Um, the cardboard, you know, basically it's it's only held down onto the layout by your 
PVA glue mixture, um, pretty much what you use to stick your scenery down to. Mm. So it's only a matter of giving a bit of a wiggle and they'll, they'll we will come free. Um, mm. Yeah, so that that that's an option. But because you could say this is more a, you'd say, proto-freelance, so you, you're taking aspects of real scenarios, real areas around the Miami downtown line, and I'm bringing that into a into a layout that's not based heavily or prototypically correct. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, by yeah, changing industries, that's that's yeah, that'd be easily done. I'll just move hmm. on to another photo for you. Yeah. Um. Okay. Now that's some seriously good modeling right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love how you got the the Google Map in there too, right on the yeah, side of the road. That was good. That's all cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. So basically, Google Maps is, is my go to inspiration. Yeah. So basically, what I've done there is okay. I've I want a grey crossing in here. How do I go about modelling it? You know, you see quite a few grey crossings uh, ramp up over the top. You know, the white painted lines and what have you. And as you can see here in this photograph very little next to nothing there you know it's fairly flat fairly easy to maintain so what i've done there is copied over to what you see now mm. here so basically the whole shape there from the footpaths to the shape of the road the positioning of the uh the cross bucks is pretty much a copy of that photograph that's cool so this uh, this is fantastic modeling uh, the palm trees are stunning um then that's that's a whole nother question, but the sidewalk next um, next to the road there, that's really well done. That's all out of card as well. Uh, what? I was going to ask you, how did you do that? Card yeah, stock. The, the, the whole lot there, the roadway, the infill between the rails, the uh, footpath, all card. Basically just layering it up using different thicknesses of the cards. So, how do you how do you do that to, without making it curl up between the tracks like that? How do you keep that down? How do you keep uh, that? Lit? Yeah, a lot of a lot of people ask me about that. Even on the buildings that I construct, where I've got a window aperture or a doorway, take your super glue and just wipe it up around the edges, around the recesses. Super glue soaks into your card and it goes hard, hard enough for you to be able to file or sand with a sanding stick. And you take all that fluffy edge away. And that's how I've done it there uh, between the rails and around the edges. Also, I quit. also, because it is card, when you do the scenery, you don't want the moisture from the PVA or your ballast mix, which is your, your, okay. your carpenter's glue water detergent to soak into the card and swell it. So yeah. it's all been sealed up properly. So you seal the card first. So so then Peter Tillman comes back and says, so, and I think you just started to talk about this, was how does the moisture affect the card? It can do if you don't seal it. Uh, yeah. Because any, any cut surface with any model or any piece of cardboard um, will attract moisture. So sure. once it's sealed, it will, uh, it will actually stop the moisture from, you know, entering. Uh, I see the question there from Heath. Um, no, I, I cut all, all of it by hand. So everything you see there, the doorway apertures, uh, windows on the buildings, uh, the shape of the roadway there is all cut by hand using a like a Stanley knife or, or just a normal scalpel, depending on the thickness of the card. Hmm. So the sidewalk, the sidewalk there is only one millimetre thick. So, get... so essentially you're... you're um... You're you're replacing card for styrene. Pretty much, you could say, yeah, you yep. could say it's a different medium that an artist would use. Yeah, that's correct. And I, I purchased the card in large sheets. They're about, I think they're about nine hundred by twelve hundred or three foot by four foot sheets. And I I buy them from uh, art art supplies. And yeah, a lot of lot of my modeling is done with card you get a few people that say oh well, card's not that crash hot you know it may swell it may do this or that um it, it won't last but if you build it correctly treat it correctly use such things as uh i'll bring that into the shot matte spray hmm. um that's just a clear matte spray that i that i purchased at local hardware and that just seals everything as well so once everything's painted weathered I seal seal the whole lot as well. 
So then, <laughs> so then this 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 then would answer Rowan's question here of uh, do you seal the full piece of card and what do you use to seal it besides CA? So it's that matte spray. Yep. That's... So let's. I'll bring you up full. Um, here I'll bring you up. Uh, let's see if I can bring you up full screen here so you can show everyone yep. what you uh, use. There we go. There you go. So it's just a finishing sealer, uh, artist finishing sealer, and I find it works really well. I do a lot of um, download kits as well and piece them together. Mm. And they're the, they're the ones that you print at home on your on your inkjet printer. I prefer to use inkjet over laserjet because laser you tend to get that nice shine to the model, wow. whereas uh, inkjet you don't get that shine on the on the finished print. So uh, once once I've uh, actually printed out that paper, I hit it with the the match spray there, both sides, front and back, hang it outside in the sun, let it dry. Then I can go from there and use those uh, texture sheets or whatever they may be. Wow. For any other extra de uh, detailing, actually, I've got a. I can, if you want to throw me back on full screen again. Yeah, I'll get a, you back up there. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, I'm disappearing there. Okay, that there, you can see is is yeah. card is uh, basically weathered concrete. Oh wow! Disappearing. Um, there you go. And I'm pretty sure. I, f I f can't remember the modeler's name. He's on one. He's on our group, and he used a lot of the scale scenes product as well. So, um, it's it's fantastic. You can take that. You can seal it with the uh, clear matte spray. Then you can add weathering powders or washes to it as well, and just change it completely. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's a really, you know, and a couple people in the chat have said it's a really underheralded medium um for to be used in our hobby mm -hmm. yeah. it is it is i mean I, I i like the use of it i mean I've, I've got plenty of it here the other the other product i use is foam core uh three millimeter or five millimeter foam core and that's a great thing for building larger structures because it is fairly rigid you can put it together with a little bit of uh but you could use you could use an aerodite. You could use one of those liquid nail types things. If you use a few dabs of that, especially on the bigger, bigger models, and and it's great for that. Um, I'm just gonna, I'll just show you this model. If if you want to put me onto uh, full screen, please, Andy. Yeah, of course. Uh, well, I don't know oh. if this is gonna work. There you go. Okay, I'll bring that up higher. Oop, yeah. it's disappearing on me. So there you uh, go. Yep. So that, that model there is wow. all made out of foam call and the printed papers. So wow. wow. Yeah. Wow. So you That's can see really the different good. textures in there, you know, from the corrugated iron roof to yep. to what you see below. Even the doors are all printed as well. Ha. That's so cool. The windows are also print and you just cut out the apertures and glue the paper down onto a clear sheet. Onto a clear styrene. Oh wow, that's fantastic! So, so there you go. So um, that, that's the sort of thing the paper can do. You know, the paper models. Some some of them are absolutely brilliant. So yeah, um, might be something for me to look into. Yeah, no oh, kidding. It's it's a cheap, affordable way of getting a, a model railway built. Uh, yeah. The company that I go through, I know there's quite a few uh, American paper modelers uh you've got clever models team track craft trains and model buildings mm. um, which are you you pay for the download and then you can go out and build them uh, what i like about scale scenes is the range of textures they've got not only do they produce models uh you know buildings from rail scene town scene dock scenes i mean he does shipping containers he does boats uh john john whiffen who owns the company is is brilliant at what he does yeah and uh, it's all, I will say it's for the British market because it's in double O and N gauge, so four millimeter and two millimeter. But I, with my downloads, when I'm producing something for HO, I just print them out at 87% rather than 100%. So 100% being double O, 87% being HO. And the prints, yeah, you can use them for anything. I even kit bash. So that model I showed you before, that warehouse, basically yeah. that one smaller model that I doubled up in size, used the textures from that kit and actually built the larger structure. It was for a competition we ran on platform one on the forum. So, ah. yeah. 
So um, Heath is also playing a producer behind the scenes for us here. And thank you for, for playing along. It helps us out. Uh, scale Scenes, right? That's uh, scalescenes.com? Yep, that's Rail correct. Scenes. Yep. yep, so Rail Scenes is one of their, one of their uh, brands of modeling. So you've got Rail Scenes, Town Scenes, Dock Scenes. Uh, if you don't particularly want any of the buildings or structures or whatever, they do have what they call the Scratch Builder's Yard. Where hmm. you can purchase individual elements. If you want to just buy windows, printable windows, they got windows. If you want to get the different types of textures from uh, metal sheets for fabrication and what have you, they've got that. They've got timber. You name it. Um, there's plenty there. Plenty, you know, from your different types of brickwork. So your normal, uh, you know, stretcher bond brickwork through to the different types of brickwork to sandstone or what they call in the UK ashlar um yeah mm. so there's plenty of textures available fantastic so uh i highly recommend them and i've been using them oh, i have to say probably 15 years and uh i must have over 40 of their kits <laughs> on file so uh they, they're great wow. for kit bashing and and you know changing things around so um but back to the fec you can see on the screen <laughs> <laughs> um that that's a screenshot of uh, family and sons down in Hialeah. And what I've done there is use that to produce, uh, you can see their cardboard structure. Okay. And that's going to be, that's becoming that. So oh, wow. You can see how I've just pieced, pieced it together. I think those roller doors are actually, I think they're, they could be from the team, one of the team track model kits. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, with a little bit of graffiti down there on the bottom corner. And you can see from the opposite end, uh, added conduits. The windows, again, they're just printed paper. I mean, when you when you apply the three-foot rule, you know, from the height we look at the model down upon, yeah. you can't tell whether they're, you know, glass or if they're printed paper. So, hmm. yeah. Um, I, like, so, I really like that. That looks so cool. Yeah. Uh, that's the next structure that's, you know, that's on the, uh, the original eight foot section. That's a blue building. Um, the conduits and the switch boxes. Uh, thank you, Boomer. <laughs> I, I, I borrowed that from him. And uh, I tell you what, adding those little details just lifts the model, brings it up another another. Yeah, notch. right. Yeah. It, uh, so how did you attach those to the paper with CA? CA, yep. Yeah, and, okay. Hence those big messy marks there and I, I tell you what i should be a little bit more careful because uh a lot of my buildings are just painted with cheap acrylics the stuff that you buy from the like the two dollar store the thrift shop or wherever you know you just grab them out and you splash them on and away you go you know and i'm not too fussed how i paint the building because it will be weathered it doesn't matter if it's a little bit rough it doesn't matter if it's a little bit faded because as we know in these sort of industrial buildings the paint does fade on the surface Okay, we're getting, and I, I hope you're, you're being you're being a super good sport here, Gary. Um, so Don Iris says, what are you using for the conduits? The conduits are uh, evergreen styrene. Uh, I, I I love evergreen. I do I do model in in styrene as well as card. Um, I think I think they've all got their place. Yeah. So so yeah. So this this is a mix of styrene and, and card there. Mixed medium. That's awesome. Yep. Very cool. Okay, so here here we have a set of uh, scratch built scratch built tanks that I built. Um, that they're made from or well, forty mil diameter PVC plumbers pipe. Okay. And uh, I've just added all, all the ribbing there, all the weld lines. Uh, that's just more evergreen styrene that I've marked out on the model and glued down. I think. The next image. Yep, there it is on the on the drop saw where I've cut them down to size. So you're just using PVC pipe. PVC pipe. You so, can see the wooden stop there, and I just cut them all equal size and go from there. So, so this is a little tip here. Don't overthink it. You know, like you could find common stuff around your house, like to to build tanks or silos or stuff like that. This is so cool, Gary. Absolutely. There, there's, you know, you walk into any one of those big hardware chains and, uh, you know, 
you yeah. have a look around. Even some of the craft stores, I've I've, I've walked into some of them with my ex-wife and uh, walked into them and. You know, she's off looking at all the all the fabrics and all the pretty stuff, and I'm in, I'm in, I'm going through all the craft supplies and all that, saying, "Oh, I could use that bit of corrugated card. I could use that." And <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I I have, I have I I I like to have a look around and see what's available outside the normal hobby materials. Yeah. So um, there is a qu one more question. Mm -hmm. um, Tim Moran asks, uh, when moving your modules around, do you remove your buildings or? Are they adhered to the module? Most of them are adhered to the mod modules. Uh, those silos that I'm you see being constructed on the screen now, um, they are loose because of all the fine details and what have you. Only for the fact that if I do knock them and if you take it to an exhibition or what have you and you damage those handrails, you're not going to be able to fix them prior to the show opening so yeah. uh yeah so those, those sort of things but the main buildings and everything uh yeah i have them permanently fixed to the layout so hmm. i'll just go into another photograph yeah so there, there's some of the construction <laughs> techniques so your handrails and the ladder rack there is uh central valley from from their range of of pieces you can yeah. buy their, their stair kits, railing kits, what have you. So I, oh, I, I just cool. take them and uh, to get the round shaped on, because as you know, the, it's a fairly rigid plastic, but it's it's straight. You know, the railings are straight. So yeah. I, I boil the kettle, I plunge them into the kettle, soften the plastic, and then I wrap them around another piece of the actual uh, pipe and just take, take them into place, mm. run, them, run them back under cold water, and they tend to set to that round shape. So... It's a very simple way to to get plastic to move is just dump it into hot water exactly. to soften it up. That's a really cool tip. So <clears throat> I hope the section crew is uh, taking notes this evening. Uh, Mike, get your jaw off the workbench. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> this is this is this one. This show is chock full of great, great modeling tips. So make sure you guys are asking questions um, and in the chat tonight. And then, and then make, make sure you rewatch it to catch all the other details that that Gary's sharing with us. This is fantastic. So, so Gary, back to those handrails. Do you like you submerge those in the war? You get them just in warm water, or do you put them like how hot do you get that water? In order, I mean, obviously you don't want it to, so that they don't warp, but. Is there a certain temperature that you try to maintain for that? Because I'm sure, or is it just getting them warm enough to soften that plastic? Pretty much I'll boil the kettle. So it's boiling water. Yeah, boiling that water. That I drop them into. Wow. Yep. Yeah, so look, sometimes it doesn't always work. I think one of them, as I was gluing them around to the top of the actual uh, tank there, one did snap. So mm. you just got to be, just got to be careful. Um if you like like i said you throw them into boiling water you leave them in there for a couple of minutes sometimes you may need a change of water or just top it up so it keeps it hot just enough to soften the plastic pull it out wrap it around another piece of conduit and i actually tape it into place and sometimes if i don't i found sometimes some plastics you can run under cold water but it may make it go a little bit brittle so it may harden the plastic too quick and when you go to play with it it will it will snap so um, wow. Ralph, Ralph Renzetti asks us, uh, what do you use to plug the plumbing pipe or the PVC pipe on the top? Yeah, that's just another sheet of evergreen styrene that I've used, just an off-cut. Yeah. And I basically glue it, glue it on top and then use the uh, scalpel just to make a couple of runs around the top there and uh, trim it off, file it, and that's it. Um they're basically like the like the bottom of the, the silos there. You can see that uh, yeah. it's glued down to one solid piece. That, that's how I can lift it off the layout and put it back on. But it's just been trimmed up exactly the same. Yeah. That's wow. That's excellent. Let's see. Okay, this this is a little building. I, I had an area on the layout next to the grade crossing, and I, I just wanted something in there. And... Uh, while I was perusing Google Maps, I come across this little cafe. Now, I know some of the modelers on some of the groups said, hey, I know where that cafe is. <laughs> um, so where is it? Uh, 3675 Northwest 
46th Street. So anyway, I've, I've used that for a little bit of inspiration. And what I've done with that building there is, as you can see, this is styrene. So I've drawn it all out onto the styrene sheet, which yeah. is around it, which is a, what, 40,000 sheet that I've used here, you know, edged out the windows, what have you, the doorways, the apertures, and then uh, basically pieced it together to form form this. That's so cool. So the brickwork there is actually double O scale brickwork that I've used around the outside there. It's from a company in the UK called Slater's, and mm. they do all the embossed plastic sheeting and all that, and I've just glued that to, to more styrene uh, to form that fence. Wow. Um, you may be looking at this thinking, what the, what you is that? A toilet? <laughs> you, you're absolutely spot on there, Andy. <laughs> what? Yeah, what? He's yeah, making what? a toilet. Fire, filing it down. So <laughs> that that is a piece of uh, four millimeter diameter styrene rod you see there. Oh, so that, well. That's out. Okay. Yeah. So you're just as crazy as Boomer is when it comes to that. You're just as stuff. crazy as Boomer. <laughs> hey, where I there's a will, there's Boomer a way. Was, I thought Boomer was nuts when he built that toilet. I mean, where there's a will. Oh, oh my goodness. Really scary. Yep, where there's don't a let, will, there's a way. Don't, so, don't let anything stop you. No, that's right. Have a, have a go. Um, oh, my goodness. That, that's a little tap I made for, for, the, for the module as well. So, uh, Come, made, on. Made a couple of them. <laughs> Come on! So they're in a pair of needle nose pliers. <laughs> that is outstanding. As you can see, that lid there is a uh, the top of a Tamiya paint lid, a uh, Tamiya paint jar. Uh, there's Bill Kenkel. And... He says, <laughs> you're between you and me. Boomer, you're driving me nuts. So this is and... the scene then. That that that's it. So you've got the uh, the hand basin there, which is carved, the little tap. You've got the system to the toilet, the toilet, and you even got a roll of paper on the reel. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, and I like it's the old style, to a like water closet style toilet too. That's oh, that's very good. Yeah, and that that particular small section is actually mounted on the back of the uh, the back of the uh, cafe. Um, Going back to that previous photo, the one of the, the cafe, the actual real photo, um, yeah. it had the uh, the air conditioning duct on top, you know, and the, I suppose, the vat to clean the air out, um, cool, yeah. the, cool, cool the kitchen. So I've knocked that up out of a few bits of corrugated styrene and uh, the, the vents there are actually roof walk that you buy for your kits. Again, I think it's from Central Valley or one of those other mobs. So I've just, or it could be Titchy. So I've just taken a piece of the uh, the roof walk there and actually cut it down and filled it in to create the the vents in the side. Yeah. So oh, there, there's oh, the actual. That's great. So so that's a real thing, and that's what I've I've copied. Wow. <laughs> That's fantastic. And if I'm correct, there you go. There's a oh, there it is. There, I love on, that. on the roof, conduit running up to the uh, the fan and what have you. And you can see the loo or the bathroom, the the restroom. Yeah. yeah, stuck in on the back of the building. A bit of paving. Hmm. Yeah, so, so that's just the back of the the top and the back. So that's cool. That's really neat. I just see in postmodern model work, you, you can use, you can buy used tires in that neighborhood. You sure can. I've actually got a few, I think, in the, uh, there's a front of the building. I've, I've got one photo here that's a close up of the, the rear of the building. And uh, <laughs> I've got a few, I've got a few tires in there and, you know, that, that I've thrown in the back as well. Even the waste bin there, that that's scratch built too. Rather than go out and buy one, I just knocked it out of a cheap scrap styrene. Yeah, that dumpster looks. <laughs> dumpster. I mean, it completes the scene. So, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a, a few quiz questions here, Gary. Yep. So, I've noticed the palm trees. Mm -hmm. Are those are those uh, store bought or from a manufacturer, or, those, or do you do those yourself? They're from Amazon. I think They're I bought about Amazon. Amazon. I bought about thirty palm trees for about thirteen dollars, thirteen Australian dollars. Oh wow! Um, and 
you do get a fair bit of flash that's up the side of the trunks where the, from the molding process and a yeah. lot around the leaves. So you just take your scalpel to that, rub it up and down, just take all the flash off the side of the uh, the palm frond, or the, the trunk, I should say. Um, sometimes just a little fine pair of like a, oh, I'd say sewing scissors, the little little tiny ones about four inches long. You just got to go around and clean up, clean up the palms here and there. Yeah, right. And, and then I repaint the trunks and repaint the foliage on top of that just to, because they are that plastic look when you first get them. They just look like they've come from one of those, uh, you know, kids' farm sets type of trees. So just change them up a little bit. I do have to add some, uh, I guess it's all, all the fibre and everything that you see that gathers around under the foliage. So that's one thing I haven't added to the palm yet, but uh, that's coming. So I'll just use some of the Woodland Scenics uh, longer grass fibres yeah um and just clump them together and just wrap them around the top of the trunk there and paint them up accordingly so uh kaylee Fay has a question here it says and i think you touched on it earlier what do you use for the fence in the photo okay the fence that oh, the is fence, the, um, it looks like i'm sorry not the the brick fence there the, yeah, the, the one in the back corrugated there, iron fence. yeah yep. is a uh, scale corrugated iron that is available here in Australia and it's a cardboard product. It's it's basically embossed cardboard, you know, very thin card. Uh, the, the frame itself is evergreen styrene again and basically just lay it all out, tack it together with a bit of MEK and then I super glue the, the card or the corrugated card on, onto the frame itself. And then it's just a matter of, you know, get the paint out, give it a, giving it a bit of a, bit of a splash here of color, rust it up a little bit and add a little bit of barbed wire and, Drop it onto the layout. Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, there, there's a close up. Oh, there you go. That's nice. Of of the toilet, the fence, the gate, um, the, the gate used again. tires, the used tires. There, yep. And... <laughs> From postmodern, that was cute comment. Yep. Uh, even the mop and bucket there in the right hand side of the scene. Oh so, yeah, look at that. Yeah. Unbelievable detail here, Gary. Yeah, I mean, you, you can see this from the front of the layout. So I thought, well, if you can see it, I may as well do something with it that draws the eye into the scene. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that, that's that's what that's what I like. It's basically little modelling little cameos within the whole scene. Yeah, that's, that's that's really a good way to put it. Wow. So, yeah. That picture alone is just. Wow. We're so lucky to have this show, Mike, to have all these fantastic modelers on sharing this with us. This is incredible that we get to see this firsthand. Oh, my God. Yeah, thank you, right? Gary. This oh, is incredible. You. However, yeah. I will say this much. I, I do believe I, I can start to hear, like, the collective model railroad hobby just starting to tear everything off their layout and start <laughs> all over. Now we're now we're gonna have a run on card stock. Yeah, now there's gonna be a now there's gonna be a shortage of card <laughs> stock in the in the United States. Yeah, yeah. I, I can tell you the corrugated card there I use for the fence. Uh, I used to use that card going back, you know, 15, 20 years ago, and you could readily uh, readily available from some of the local hobby shops around Sydney. And uh, and all of a sudden it just disappeared and you couldn't find it. And I found the chap on eBay and I thought, oh, yeah, well, while he's got it, I think I ended up buying seven or eight packets of the card. You know, you get about 10 sheets in it because yeah. if I'm going to buy it, I'm going to buy enough that I can store away because I don't know how long he's going to have it for. And then there was some delay with with uh, with eBay and what have you. And I had to send him a few nasty emails saying hey where's my product and <laughs> <laughs> chased him up and uh i actually put one of my good friends uh peter heiniger onto the same chap and uh even he he had troubles getting his card but uh i said just keep at it keep at him he'll, he'll send it to you so finally got it in, in the end and i mean it's a good product i, I, yeah. I love it and uh yeah uh let's move on okay telegraph bowls now you've seen these you've seen boomer do these and uh that's yeah. what i stole them from uh <laughs> but now this is the second time i've seen legos make an appearance in I, in your model yep it, it's uh it's a great tool for 
uh, supporting your models while you're building it or a little yeah. rack, you know. I mean, basically, when I built these, I need, 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 needed to photograph them. Rather than lay them down, I wanted to stand them up. So I just put a little bit of my son's Lego together and it's a bit of that technique stuff with the holes in it. So I stood the poles up and, yeah. But uh, I, I use it all the time, especially constructing, uh, like, if, if I'm doing a full frame for a station building or an engine house, I'll, I'll use uh, Lego because I can build it to any height I, I require. To it's perfectly to get, square yeah, too, isn't it? perfectly square, yeah. Actually, if, if, if you build the Lego correctly, you can actually build yourself some squares for um, as, a, as a gluing jig. Oh, yeah. So when, you, when you're bringing two corners of a building together that are 90 degrees, you just basically take your Lego, build, build a... A square, but I actually leave one 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 of the corners out so you can actually get your glue. You can actually get your the fine tip glue um, nozzle up up through the through the gap, and and it saves you sticking your model to the Lego as well because uh, MEK will stick the Lego like like nothing else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. MEK will stick anything to anything almost. <laughs> Just about, especially your fingers. Yeah, <laughs> watch out. <laughs> That's right. So um, a lot of lot of a lot of these, well, I say all of them. Um, I've got to thank Boomer for his uh, tutorial on building, constructing utility poles. Those look fantastic. Uh, yeah, so so they they've come up quite nicely, and as you can see, they're on the layout there. Not actually painted up yet, but uh, spaced apart. I think I spaced them around about eighty-five feet apart in scale, um, which I think's roughly correct anyway. Yeah, it's, that's about right, depending on how heavy your wire is that you're running yep. between the poles, right? So this is so we're we're getting a nice little view of how you're building this scene up. Yeah, it's slowly coming together. Um, as I mentioned before, start at the bottom, work your way up, get get up to the finished product. So all your detailing items, such as the poles and what have you, they 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 come in towards the end. Um, the fencing also, you know, you can see the. Uh, I should say the security fencing. That's that's a wobbler's kit there, but I've developed my own method of making my own now. Um, so once this, the basic scenery's gone down, your grass layers are gone down, I start putting these elements into place. Then I start adding the next layer of scenery, which is your taller grass, your weeds and what have you, yeah. because every, everything grows up against the fences or against the walls of the buildings and what have you, rather than have that in there first, fill those gaps in. No, that's a good. That's a good point. Um, yeah. Again, it goes back to your philosophy of the building the cake, right? That's correct. You know, yep. Yeah, building the layers. So Ralph Franzetti has another question. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you do the barbed wire? The barbed wire is uh, uh, your nylon uh, fly screen that you put on your windows. So basically, I, I just got some scraps from when I, when I trimmed up, when I fixed the screen doors and the windows here in my home. And I just basically took a strip off and just cut the barbs down a little bit, attached one with a bit of CA, gave it a twist, attached it to the next pole, gave it a twist, attached it to the next pole, and moved along down the fence line. You need to talk to our friend Luke Lemons. You guys would get along famously, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. Luke, and I know Luke is in here right now, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, my God. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's a perfect, that's a perfect gauge wire, too. It is. It's nice and fine. So it's, it's actually a nylon. Fine. So um, yeah. I did have a go of like the aluminium fly mesh. Yeah. And I found that every time you try to trim the little barbs, they'd just fall off because it's almost like a press fit on that stuff where the oh. nylon is is almost, it, it's secured. It, it's fixed. Um, and I didn't lose any of the barbs at all. That's fantastic. Oh. So uh, Marty's train shed has a question. I apologize for all the questions, but they're so good. Um, are you going to put uh, wires on the poles? And if so, what are you going to use? Yeah, well, it would have been a fortnight ago or so or three weeks ago. I just uh, went out and purchased some of the Easy Line. Easy Line. Yeah, which is that uh, it's it's a very it's like a It's like an elastic almost, right? That's correct. Yep. Yep. So you, you can buy it. I think it's a hundred moody or a hundred yard roll for about, or I think here in Australia, it's a fifteen twenty dollars. And uh, I'm just going to eventually stretch out across across the poles. I've actually got to make more of these poles um, for the layout. So this turned out so good. Yeah. So well, one, one, once once all the poles are in, that's where I'll connect them all up with the lines. Yeah. It's 
That is awesome. Like way beyond awesome. Yeah. Okay. There they are painted up on the layout now. So everything you see on those poles there all come from Mo from Boomer. Even those little uh I suppose they're transformers on the side there, you know, they mm, yeah, yeah. They'll they'll take them from Boomer too. That's fantastic. <laughs> ah now we all see we all see these on, on the side of the tracks. Yeah. Wow. Um yeah, I think BLMA manufactured these as well, but uh when I went looking for them, uh there were none available. So I actually jumped online and searched for a plane and I did manage to find a plane, which is there. Hmm. And, and I've actually got the line drawing with all the measurements on as well, but it's got all the company's TCRs measurements and everything on there. That's why I've got image courtesy of TCR on here. Hmm. Um, I don't want to be done for copyright. I don't want you guys done for copyright. So basically I've... Uh, <laughs> uh, it's fair use. You know, We're talking about it. We're talking about it. We in, are in, indeed, yeah. In such so a pleasant manner. I, I've, I've decided to make a make that model of it. So that, again, yeah. out of styrene and just knocked it all up. And, you know, oh, everything there is slick. just uh, scribed in all the doorways, all the framework that you see is just scribed into the uh, styrene sheet. Yeah. Yep, and uh, yeah, so little little things like that. I That's mean, you can so go out, cool. you can buy, you can buy a model of it, or you can, if you've got a bit of styrene lying around, just have have a go at building something yourself. Um, yeah, no kidding. Never, never say never. Just give it a try. Just give it a go. Yeah, you, you'd be surprised. Um, I must admit, going back ten years ago, fifteen years ago, I, I I go out to these exhibitions and I see all these super detailed layouts, and I'm like, wow, I'd never be able to do that. But um. Yeah. Being, being in groups and forums and all that, and the model railway community is such a great community for sharing knowledge. You, you just learn so much, and that's why I like to impart my knowledge to other, other modelers too. And uh, if they can get something out of my YouTube videos or what I'm showing here, for instance, you know, fantastic. Yeah, stupendous. Hey, it can't... Did I miss something? Did we ever cover what era he models? No, we didn't. Um, I think that was a question that came up a while ago. Um, so yeah, Mike, why don't you bring that one front and center? I think I just did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was. I just I thought something caught the corner of my eye, and I. I'm yeah. So, tired. so Gary, what era do you actually model? Okay, you could say it's uh, early two thousands to about twenty fifteen thereabouts in in that in that bracket um then again if i'm throwing you know if i throw the conrail on there it's a little bit early if i throw a little bit of csx on there it can be it can play around a little bit you know it's that a period in between so um but predominantly it's that that later period you know say early 2000, 2005 to 2015 you know <laughs> Almost modern day, you could say. Um, the Br British modelers would say, oh, that's modern era, you know, because hmm. they, they've either got steam, transition, or modern. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, you could say. There's there's three types of, yeah, of there's modeling, three steam, Only three. transition, and modern. So the reason I was asking is because of the fact that I, uh, that's a more modern style bungalow for yes. Crossing bungalow. The 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 earlier ones were not really a, a full structure like that. They were more like a. I have one right down the road by my house. It's it's more, more like a cabinet. It, it's like a cabinet. It's yeah. more like what it is. So like that's why that kind of triggered. Oh hey, I wonder what what era he's modeling. So mm. yeah, when I, when I, when I search yeah. for these, I, I found <clears throat> these go back to. Uh, uh, late late 90s thereabouts 98 99 through i think um from the information that i found anyway so um i i also suppose it depends on the railroad too when they decide to uh install these type of modern cabinets you could say yeah yeah oh man okay i'm just gonna flick past that one okay you can see here the layout's starting to develop now into something a little bit more um Jeez. this 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 photo was only taken recently um, in the last couple of couple of days for for the podcast. So um, huh. you can see, you know, there's a lot of grass, a lot more detail in there now. One thing I do have to work on is a back scene 
for beyond the, the grey crossing there where that little green car is sitting. Um, I do have a nice photo there, but trying to get the photo right where the road's not, you know, veering off at one angle or another mm -hmm. is the hardest yeah. thing. And uh, then, then trimming the photo up. And I've got to watch, you know, when you jump onto Google Maps or Bing Maps or whatever, when you're looking at street scenes and all that, you might get those big modern concrete style uh, utility poles that are, that are just monsters where if I had one on this layout, it would almost be as high as that uh, back scene there. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's that, that sort of thing I'd try and, try and omit from the photographs, you know. I mean, you could also throw it into one of the, uh, uh, you know, photo editing softwares like and photoshop take, take, or something yeah like photoshop that. it out yeah take it out so uh i've done that a few a few times on a couple other little layouts where i've used use uh programs like that just to just to change images <laughs> and so, so suit it to what i need yeah. um so so really there you can see the the card buildings up on the top of the screen down to the styrene building the cafe itself yep um and, and and the odd palm trees now i know palm trees aren't everywhere along the miami downtown spur but a couple of photos that i've seen and a couple of the videos i've watched from tolga east and there's another chap on one of the facebook groups who produces some decent videos too that i watch um you do see these palms around quite a bit these i think they're mexican fan palms yeah uh, yep wow That's really good. I love that. Hmm. Okay, so we spoke about the extension earlier. Yes. And as you can see, uh, the yellow up the top there is what you just saw in the previous photograph there. Um, that's the existing Miami shelf layout, which is eight foot long. And what is in lined in red there is the new extension. So hmm. the from one side of the layout to the other side it's 11 feet by 11 feet down the left hand side there as well so it gives gives you an idea it's not a great big layout but uh i, oh, I do pack, pack a little bit in for operations this did change because as you can see from that plan there is no fiddle yard there's no storage yard for your train so eventually i went from this plan and i changed a few things over and got to what you've seen on on the on the Facebook group, some of the photos there, and uh, yeah, uh, I've got a question here regarding car cards, switch list, or JMR. Well, just so happens that Heath the other day put up that great video about car cards and waybills, and I watched that and I thought, brilliant, that's what I need. Um, yeah. I haven't decided at the moment. It's just a bit of you could say freelance switching. I'll do what I want at the moment, you know. Um, yeah. As I say, rule number one: it's your layout. Do what you want. <laughs> and that's a great, great rule. That that's is the great best rule. rule. Yeah. So, so what what I do do is generally take a train out of the yard. Uh, I do have another picture here that shows you where the yard is located, and I'll run a train up into the old, the old ex or the existing Miami shelf layout. Switch that out. Bring that back. Maybe rearrange a train so it's basically like a, a three road fiddle yard so i've got a an arrival road of departure road and a you could say a team track or whatever there's something that you can store the train on that you're building and then you might take it out to one of the other industries switch that out and eventually you know take it back up to the other end of the layout run the loco around bring it back into the fiddle yard then you construct another train build up another train take it to a different industry so you can run around or you can you know at the moment just run anywhere put any cars on and just take them to whatever destination you wish so yeah it's a bit, a bit of fun at the moment but uh the car card sy system is what i'm leaning towards um i do have building the right size layout book there and there's a good good uh chapter in there about you know operating the layout which i've read once twice three times so uh, i'll be reading that again real soon okay fantastic and they're, they're the baseboards and you can see the actually that layout that's in the background is a layout with the well the back the layout with the blue back scene over there is a layout that i've recently sold it's one of my other uh, australian layouts and my mate dave coyle that lives up in newcastle he purchased that off me and we've built that into his layout currently but uh that is where the original sections are sitting 
uh, the original sections of the Miami downtown spur or the food industry sitting and it connects up to this nicely. So uh, I mentioned before that this layout sits up about 53 and a half inches height using these shelves here, which to me is a great idea. It saves your building legs everywhere. It gives me plenty of storage, especially when you're building a layout because you've always got your static grass out, your flocks out, your glues out, and I can just reach down below me, pick them up and use them. So yeah, it's a good design. So I noticed uh, you're using for the for the legs and supports. That's some sort of metal, aluminum yeah. or steel. Yeah, aluminum or aluminium, as as Paul Casso would put it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah. Uh, we, yes, he's right. Though we call it aluminium down here. Um, I bought those shelves for about sixteen dollars each, and I've got six of them under there. So, wow, I, 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 eighty odd dollars for for six shelves, and uh, it supports the layout nicely. Yeah. And uh, the layout is modular, so you've got uh, over in pretty much middle screen up the top there where you've got the corner module, that is three foot by three foot, so that pops out as one section. Then the whole peninsula section there in the middle, that's five foot long, so that's another section. And then coming towards us to where this light bracket is, is two sections. So the whole thing is modular, it all breaks down. I can pretty much fit it in the back of a car, a stand, stand at station wagon. Oh, that's pretty slick. Wow. So then let me, uh, I'm going to jump in and ask a question then. So hmm. is this, is this going to be taken to exhibitions as well? Uh, coming in September, October, uh, the NMRA are having an exhibition or a convention uh, yeah. down here in Sydney. So I'll be packing the layout down and taking it out to the convention. So uh, that'll be its first outing for this one. So I have the whole layout's what, going. The whole layout's going. Awesome. Yeah, See, that's so, cool. That's yeah, way yeah, cool. I like that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just going to hire a, a van for that, you know, um, just throw it in the back of the van and shift it down there. And uh, I, I run NCE. So the original module's got the NCE. On hmm. on the peninsula section, that's where I've got one of the Cabo 6 set up so uh while one person switching one side another person can be switching the peninsula section or in the foreground here where i've got another another industry that's fantastic peter tillman says he'll see you there yes and marty's train shed uh says cool i will be able to see the layout at the convention in october definitely will do yep now, what have I done here? I've just lost my photographs. Won't be a moment. <laughs> so I still have you. I still have you up on screen, and you're doing you're doing stuff and things, um, at least in my window. Okay. Um, so um, Ken N um, does have a question. He says, uh, "How do you secure all the sections together?" I use. Uh... I don't have them here, but they're basically a like a carpenter's dowel type thing where you've got a, a socket and a screw that goes in the opposite side. So basically they're viced together or uh, G-clamped together, drill one hole through, you tap the female part into one side and then I can use the screw on the other side that brings the modules together. So um, that, work, that works nice. It, it keeps things nice and square. Um, mm. Basically two fittings per section or between each module so you know nothing's going to swing like that nothing's going to miss a line or anything like that the track work i actually use copper clad sleepers on the ends uh, mm. a friend of mine and a friend of paul marty he does these and and paul spoke about it in the previous show about the copper clad sleepers that he uses um they're they're a great little product basically like pc board ties PC we, board, we, yeah. we may know them here in the north america yeah so basically it's uh four or five ties on the one piece of pc board but you get two parts so you get a you know mm -hmm. left and a right if you want and yeah. they can be either glued down to the board or you can drill a hole in them and tack them down into position basically you put them down you've removed the ties off your off your flex track or whatever you're using and then you solder it i i, I like to solder everything down in one go so the rails are fixed right across, then use the uh, razor saw to cut through the rails. So you know exactly that every time it comes apart and goes back together again, it's going to be spot on. That's there's true. No, there's no uh, toing and froing with the track work. Yeah. That's then cool. what about what about your wiring then for, for that? Is that modular also? Do you have it, that set up 
like with uh, quick disconnects of some sort, or yeah, I might go in and see if I can. I don't know why I can. Uh, let's see now. Let me get out of that. I'll, I might close that off, and I'll uh, I'll sure present again. I'll uh, bring up another photograph. Reason I was asking because yep. I started using the the Wagyu connectors. Uh, yep. I don't know if you have those in in Australia or not, but I mean it's where you know they're very nice. Where you just yeah, pull they, the little arms up, put the wires in, and pop the arms down. It makes makes yeah, wiring so they, much faster. Call them lever nuts. Um, yeah, sometimes I have I have some right here. Somewhere. Yeah. So uh, just for those who joined late, um, so Gary does have a, a presence on social media, um, and I will or I have included those um, links in the uh, show description. So uh, make sure you check out his YouTube channel. That's G-A-Z-G-A-Z-3801. Fantastic videos on there about this layout. And then um, he also has uh, on Facebook the Platform One MRC. Nice Facebook group where a bunch of folks get together and share some fantastic modeling. So uh, for those who, who did join uh, after we start, started the show and, and did the introduction, make sure you catch Gary there. It's fantastic stuff. Um, but I'm going to kick it back over to Gary now, and he can go ahead and explain some of the wiring and under the under the layout. Yep. As you can see, there's a bus wire under the two modules, corner module and one of the other sections. And all, all of my droppers to the bus wire is all soldered. No actual uh, connections, like your Wagyu connections or anything like that. I, I prefer to solder everything so I know it's, it's solid, it's fixed, and nothing's going to come loose. Um, on the very end, you can see on the the taller board on the right hand side there there's actually a connection there so it's basically a male female reversed over and they just plug in and through the baseball i've just drilled out and bored out a hole big enough for them to say slide through the baseboards and connect so there's enough play in it you can see the one on the left it's got enough play in there to pass over to the next baseboard mm-hmm. and that's it that's how cool. I it. yes simple. very simple very easy um no fuss i think i pay about four dollars each for a, a you know basically basically getting a piece of wire or double wire and the plugs about six inches long i just cut it in half and flip it around the other way and and that's all i do so a couple of bucks there spent on the connectors and it's worked for every layout that i've used that i've built hmm. i should say yeah yeah and away you go and it's very go. very nice and neat tidy uh, very, very tidy. tidy very tidy that's a good way that's One, a good way of putting it yeah one way I've developed to keep the bus wire tensioned is to use cable ties. Eyelets in the very end of your baseboard. So where your baseboard frame is, say, at the top of the uh, the board and the bottom of the board there, screw your eyelets in. A cable tie sort of looped around, but uh, or a zip tie, you may call them. Yeah, zip ties. Um, zip tie, yep. And just leave it loose, but leave, leave it in a loop. Then bring your wire down, loop it through once, loop it through twice, then where it meets your bus wire, zip tie that on very tight so it can't pull out. Then what you can do, you can actually pull the zip tie and it pulls the wire out nice and taut from each end. Wow. And if, you, if your wire starts to slacken off a little bit, just give the zip tie a little bit more of a pull and it stops any sag or any expansion or contraction in the wire as well. So it's a nice, <laughs> simple, nice, simple uh, technique. Yeah, that's that's really cool. That is uh, that's a good that. another another good tip. So um, Bill Kenkel comes back and says ground throws for turnouts. So what are what do you use to do turnout control? Finger. Finger. <laughs> yep, I just reach <laughs> over. Um, I was going to go wire and tube under the layout, which I started with, and. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. The problem is when you've got the baseboard and you've got 30 mil uh, insulation foam on top of that, your your vertical rod that goes up to the centering pin of the uh, uh, your, your tie there, uh, your throw tie. Basically, there's there's too much vertical movement in the in the in the wire. So I thought, well, I'm going to leave that out, and I'm just going to use the old finger, just reach across, flick the points. So the 
I don't know if you use Pico at all. I know a couple mm -hmm. of the American modelers are starting mm -hmm. to move over towards the Pico track work. Um, they've got those little lugs on the end of your, your throw bar as well. And uh, you, you can either use them or the actual center of the track to, to throw the switch blades. Um, easy ass, but I did buy some of those nice uh, point levers, uh, 3D printed point levers. So I, I do have them around here somewhere, but I, I think they come from the Czech Republic and huh. they're nice. So they're a nice little detail item that I'll add to the, uh, add to the lab <laughs> eventually. They're not operating, but they look the part. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. Oh, that's where we were. The... Yep. Yep. So we were there before. Uh, um, I'm just going to move on to, okay, let me see now. Okay. Um, with this photo, a lot, a lot of industrial uh, railway areas, you could say, have these sort of buildings, you know, little alleyways where... I, I call it on my layout the Miami corridors, mm -hmm. or the downtown corridors, where the, where the line sneaks up between between buildings. Um, so I've opted to to model that on part of the layout, and these are just some of the buildings I've chosen to mm. to, to model. That's um, a cool looking building. Yeah, well, this this building down on Northwest 59th Street near I think it's High Lear or the next suburb up Brownsville or one of the other places I can't remember where. I've actually built a model of that, but I reversed it. I basically turned the front of the building, the maroon there, back to front. Ah. So that section that steps out is on the left, and the actual angle of the building runs the opposite direction. Wow. Yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll get, get on to that. Um, another shot of Miami Produce, which is no longer rail-served. It's been cut off. But if you watch some of those old videos or if you watch, you see Lance's downtown uh, downtown spur videos you'll see that he's got this in his layout so another building i've built my rendition of this building it's not an exact copy but it's you know it serves a purpose for what i need it for oh, there's another photo of it Ooh, yeah. yep you, wow. you can actually see under under that truck there the the lorry, um you can see the track there there's two two lines in front of the truck there as well there's another another line that went in there mm. I don't know whether they had a run around there or not, but uh, yeah, I, I dare say that would have been a very busy place back in the day. Uh, this is another key feature, and you can see this on Lanter's layout as well, but he's built the whole structure, uh, although it is, is compressed. Mine's compressed too, but I've only built, oh, it's probably only maybe six inches wide, so I've got the, the foreground legs and part of those uh, the cantilevered roof section there. Um, that I've that I've built, and I'll, I'll get to the photos there. Okay, um, talking of the Miami corridors, this this how I've constructed my buildings again, out of one eighth millimeter card or three eighth card. Mm. Uh, wow. Yep. So you Beautiful. can see you can see some black lines there beside the track between the track and the building itself. Yeah. I basically take my longest rail car. And you know you put the pen about halfway or on the ends, and you you run the rail car around the around the track, and that gives me a guide roughly how much overhang or clearance I need between the car and the building. So it's it's an old technique; it's been used for decades, but it works. Wow, simple! It, it, it's a simple trick. It's it's simple, and you're guaranteed you're not going to have any issues. So, um, that's very clever. There you go. So there's the start of these buildings. You can see the one above is actually finished and weathered up and what have you. So so it's just all card, all cut out. You know, I mean, I will say that one eighth of an inch or three millimeter card, it's a bugger to cut. I can tell you what you go through a few uh, few few blades, few scalpel blades. Um, but in the end, the results the results speak for themselves. I think. Yeah. But, let me go back out of that. So uh, that's the key then working with card is to have very sharp exacto blades or hobby knives. It is indeed, yep. Okay. Otherwise you'll have the point of the knife in your finger. That's right indeed. Now for some reason now I've just lost my image. There we go. Um oops. 
Now, where's my... Uh, I think I'm just going to have to stop sharing and go back into it again because it's uh, my whole whole scroll of photographs that just disappeared there, Andy, so it won't be a moment. <laughs> <laughs> No, we'll take we'll take a, a small commercial break here, um, and yep. and that's all right. So again, I do I do want to um, pass along some notes to the section crew this evening. Um, if you have any questions uh, for Gary um, and and the content that he's showing and sharing with us tonight, um, please please let us know. I know we're getting in uh, to about hour two here of the show, and if you have uh, I think there was a question earlier about um, seeing some of his other layouts. We are going to get to some of that too, um, so stick tight. That's going to be a, a interesting. Uh, <laughs> there's there's uh, there's some fantastic modeling. Um, yeah, buckle from, from, up, kids <laughs> from, from areas around the world. Um, but as we go through the the Miami uh, spur here, it's it's it was really a cool cool layout to walk through and we didn't get to go through half of these uh photos last night so no it's it's been a it's so so let me ask you mike i'll, I'll while gary's uh pulling up some more pictures here what do you think so far ah uh, it's all right i mean it's it's it, not it's, it's not okay. bad i mean it's just <laughs> meh i mean it's you know it's it's only doing kind of innovative things and yeah you know, i think it's, it's fantastic. kind of doing some things that i mean Make his stuff look good. I mean, do got to kind of knock him though. I mean, with all the stuff that he's done so far, that he's done and done and done, he bought the palm trees. <laughs> I was kind of hoping that he would have said, you know, I came and made him out yeah. of this. I made him yeah. out of this. I made him out of this. And well, I got. But then again, you got. What did you say? You got what? Thirty of them for thirteen dollars or something like that. Something yeah. along that lines. It, you can't. You can't really argue with that. I no, mean, it's you can't. and and they look good. So I mean, yeah, he's this is this one's been pretty okay. <laughs> no, it's it's, it's fantastic, and especially you know sharing sharing all the tips and the little you know the little tricks that essentially help you achieve these fantastic looking scenes. I, is I, I might tell, not be able to sleep tonight. That's I never <laughs> do after these shows. My mind is always racing and. Uh, oh. But Bill Kenkel has another uh, question. He says, what do you use for sub road bed? Looks like foam. Yeah, it's insulation foam that I use there. Uh, mm -hmm. It's available from our stores down here, Bunnings. Um, I do know it comes in two different sizes, about two inch and one and one and a half inch thickness or 30 mil or thereabouts, or one and a quarter inch, I should say. Um, I have used that on other layouts, and the beauty of that is if you're doing a rural scene and you want to put a creek or anything in, you can actually carve down below track level. Yeah. Um, rather than build your layout or, or your track work up on stays and little narrow timber roadbed sort of thing and then bring the landscape in around it, I do it the other way so I can carve down into the scenery. Uh, I'll, I'll show a photo of that a little bit later on in one of my other layouts if, you, if that's all right. Yeah, by all yeah. means, I, I, I'll, I mean, we'll put the question to the section crew. I think, you know, we're we're carrying in hour two here. We have 105 people in the chat, um, and it's uh, if you guys want to see more of Gary's work, uh, let us know. Um, so so we can so we can you know see see some of his other cool things that he's done. Okay, let's see how we go now. It's always the fun part of using StreamYard. Um, it's the it's the the screen share is always the the tricky part. There the high go. quality production value is what. There, there we, we go. go. Look at that! Well, look at that! Come on, it's a beauty. Yep. So they're those two card buildings that you're seeing being constructed earlier, finished up. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I think they've come up okay. You, you're being very yeah, modest, that's just Gary. Kind of, that you're being very this. modest. Yeah. So um, <laughs> that looks fantastic. Could could now, you do? Could you do? How me do you a get favor? that switch? Could you zoom use... in just a hair um, and and bring it just the, the so if you just like a control and scroll up, um, I think you can make that a little bigger in there. Uh, or there might be a zoom button too. Um, I think I see a percentage sign there, so like ninety some percent or whatever. Um, but at any rate, 
um, so this is this is how this scene turned out. And so you went back and the roof, I'm gonna guess that that's cardstock as well on the building on the right. Yep. Okay. It, it is. Uh, but, but, but the whole construction there is all card. Uh, yeah. The only styrene I've used in there is for downpipe cylindrical conduits. Uh, mm. The little uh, landing that you can see towards the end of the red and yellow building, that's, that's yeah. styrene too. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, everything's cardstock. Yeah, that's fantastic. So do you use something other than your finger to get in between those buildings to throw that switch? That, do you like a little... Probably... Yeah, look, it's it's probably about four inches wide between the two buildings there, so there, there's enough room to get your finger down. Because the the building on the left is only about three inches high, the building on the right would be oh, three and a half inches high. So it's they're not, oh, they're not okay. too big. Yep, yeah, they're sort of your standard sort of old industrial buildings. Yeah, nice, nice little urban canyon there. Yes, yes. So, yeah, so I, exactly. I, I, I wanted to break the scene uh, mm -hmm. because that track there runs from, uh, from from you could say off the main around to what I've modelled Miami Produce uh, where I've done that. So I just wanted to break it away from the rest of the layout, and I thought, well, two buildings as such will create that no, that good, break. Yeah. It's a good idea to use for a view block. Wow. It is yeah. wow. <clears throat> cool. Okay. Let's see. So people in the chat are asking for more. So I yep. guess they will have to oblige. Yeah, we will do. I'm just going <laughs> to. Here's I'm two gonna, seconds. So I'm just going to have to go out and uh, I'll have to go back into this again. Sorry about that. Guys, no, that's but, uh, all right. He says the meat hands won't fit in there. That's for sure. <laughs> okay. I'm surprised Luke didn't say anything about the barbed wire. That That was, I was shocked that he didn't say anything about that well maybe he already knows i don't know no oh, maybe know. yeah maybe so okay all right i'm back onto it might be a second all right. Oop, yeah. where am i going no, i don't want that and ralph you are correct we are through hour two entering hour three <laughs> well okay there, there's a uh, awesome. ground view that's, of that same scene that's gorgeous so all all the trash that you see there i basically those catalogs you receive in the mail for your local shopping center and all that i just peel peel out a bit of yellow bit of red bit of blue whatever and just chop it up just throw it into a bowl and chop it up make little squares and rectangles and what have you and just sprinkle it down onto the layout to create that trash that's um, a good idea what, yeah in the a lot of photos that I've seen online, it it does look like this, depending on the depending on the era and, and where you, where it uh, where it actually is. Uh, one of the things I've added on some of the other scenes is from Mini Princess the uh, the garbage bags that uh, Bernard does, and they are brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, this that other building I was speaking about before, which was the Salco building, wet that I actually reverse the shape of it. So, wow! Yep. Yeah, so, so it's back to front. And there it is there finished. Oh, Again, wow. all cardstock. The the downpipes and the roller doors there are evergreen styrene. Uh, and the rest is all all card. Even the ribs on the I think the ribs on the building that I put in there, the buttresses, they're yeah. they're styrene as well. Hmm. Just to create that better detail. Um, my version of the Miami Produce Center, which again cardstock and paint it up. I still have to add the stays from the uh, the wall to the to the awning. So that, that's one little detail. While I'm building a layout, I decide not to do that just in case I bump it and snap them. Mm -hmm. but they're, they're, it's only going to take, you know, half hour to put a few on and give them a bit of paint. So it won't take too long to add them. The mm. ferrous processing, which was I showed you on that last photo of the street scene there, the, the larger uh, metal recyclers um all this this is one of those other models i decided to build out of styrene because it's just far easier to get the shape so each piece has been individually cut to size you know lined out to create that larger girder type structure 
and uh, yeah, just all pieced together. So that's those stabilizers there. That's that's just I'm gonna guess styrene rod and then styrene in, rod in into a tube. Into a tube, yep. And I've just crossed wow. the tube out and just fed them through. Dude, that's really good. Okay. And here's a little bit of fiddly fiddly detail work. So that that's only about four inches high, maybe an inch and a half wide, apart from where the stairs are, of course. And fiddly? Fiddly. 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 Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. So, uh, Gary, um, Postmodern Model Works asked the question, why cardstock over styrene? I, we may have covered it earlier, but maybe good for those who join late. Yeah, look, I've, I've got a good supply of cardstock, and I've used it previously in a lot of my other layouts. And I've found that even after 10 years, it's still durable, it's still solid. Um, if I was to build that same larger building out of styrene, it'd probably cost me four times the amount. Maybe so four there's times a bit the of cost. So there's a bit of cost involved too, where, uh, which I mentioned before, a three foot by four foot sheet of that three millimeter cardboard, I think is around about $11 Australian, could, could be even cheaper. Where if you're gonna go three foot by four foot of styrene sheet, say 40 thou, or even 60 thou for something a little bit solid that you'd need it for, that's going to cost you significantly more. So, uh, so I, I keep all the styrene for things like you see on the screen now, um, part of the uh, filtration plant. Hmm. Yep. So, I'll just move on to the next shot. Okay, that's that's the top of the filtration plant, which actually sits on top of the roof. So it's another little section, and that fifty cent coin there. Uh, would be around about inch and a quarter in size. Unbelievable. So again, this was taken off the photographs that I saw from Google Maps. So you, you're just trying to get those angles, you know, you jump down on the street, you get an angle from one side, get move down the street a bit further, get a photo or a screenshot from the other side. And and uh, from what I've seen, that's, uh, that's as close as I can get it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And there it is, painted up. Yep, that's awesome. Yes. So, okay, is that is that painted again with that that craft paint that you said, or is that do you use like something else through an airbrush? Mm. I used it through an airbrush on this model. Yeah. Uh, just some uh, Tamiya, Tamiya or uh, Mister Hobby, one of those brands of paints. Um, yeah, I I do enjoy using those paints. Uh, I see a question here from Dodo One Ops. Do you, do I, I reinforce the card stock? Yes, I do. All, all all the corners where I join the sections together are all reinforced with gussets. Uh, even the roof sections, because I can roll the, the bottom of the uh, models are empty, so there's no floor in them at all. So I can actually flip it upside down and add more gussets to strengthen it. Or I put some internal walls that you can't see inside the model that'll that'll stop even even the roofs from sagging. Because that's one thing with card models, uh, you can have the card after time just start to sag a little bit inside. So if you put some internal walls or gussets in there, you'll keep it all nice and firm, nice and solid. Wow. Okay, that, that's the view of the real. Well, it looks like you nailed it. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. So that's that's all I had to work off to That's all? That. Oh that's all. Yep. Oh wow. So wow. I, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yep. So uh I mean it's amazing what you can can see and, and view by using Google Street View. Even from the aerials, you just can't get down close enough. So I might jump onto something like Bing, Mac, Bing Maps, which you can actually get a little bit closer, like a bird's eye view, and come down. And it's a little bit more yeah. in focus. So I try and get it as as close as possible. And I think that's the beauty of the model railroad. If it looks right, or it looks close enough to the real thing and represents the model well, it will look good on the layout. Um, I mean, you could build something that looks like a dog's breakfast and uh, you look at it and again, that doesn't look right. And, you know, I've done that in the past and, you know, I've basically screwed it up and thrown it out the door and started again. <laughs> yeah. 
It's, uh, wow. It's it's really good stuff. Um, must be a piece uh, of the build here that we're looking at. Yeah, because of the shape of the building, because it's it's actually an L shape, a, a roof section. Trying to keep it supported because this is on the edge of the layout is one thing. So what I've decided to do is add some of the styrene tube to the inside of the wall behind the uh, the vertical uh, beams there, and into the floor of the model, I've actually got the male section poking up. So I can actually lift this whole model off. So they're, they're just basically a little stabilizer and it stops the whole thing from falling over. Tilting down. Yep, tilting wow. down. So, so that, was, that was the way I got around. I was looking at using neodymium magnets and other things and I thought, you know what? Bugger that. I'll just... Uh, pin it. Pin it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> just, just pin it. And, and and it works because and that way I can actually lift it off if I want to do any work. If it, if I damage it somewhere, I can lift the whole thing off and uh, just uh, just go work yeah. on it wherever you need to, right? Yeah, exactly. That's right. That's right. Part of the layout shows a uh, an oil terminal, so I bought the tank uh, truck loading area from Walters. But what you see on that photo on the on the right is what I really wanted. Um, this oil facility is just down the road from the Ferris Processing Plant in in Miami or in higher layer. So uh, I've decided to kit bash that into that. You did it. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> you did it. Go back. So, okay. so, camera yep. one. And now camera two. He did, he he hammered it. Oh jeez. So so this is this another one of those multimedia kit bashes here where it looks like you did you use cardstock or is it all styrene? Uh it's mostly styrene. The roof is cardstock. Yeah. It's a corrugated card that I've that got. Co yep. that corrugated. I was gonna say, is that, that that stuff that same stuff you use for that fence, right? On the fence, that's correct. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So basically it was a bit of a fiddly job to do because I the original model had the center stays in it. Um if you look on on there, you can see it's got the the two central supports. Where I had to take them out completely and replace them with what you see here with the I beam. So I've had to drill through the actual platform and then poke them up through it, fill it all in around it, and build the structure from there. So so basically, the roof structure, the whole A frame, and the legs were were built as as one unit. Then it was dropped into the holes on the platform and then supported, glued, stuck together, and uh, yeah, put together as such. <laughs> so uh, Sparky107107 asked, um, how, how much time did you put into that? It was a few hours put into that one, um, yeah. a couple of afternoons. The, the actual A-frame structure was easy to do. It was figuring out how I was going to actually build it into the existing platform and all that plumbing so yeah, all that plumbing is that that came with the kit. I've used that, just rearranged it slightly differently, you know, to to suit to suit the model itself. Um, you can see the yellow pipes hanging from the ceiling there, or the roof. Uh, they'd they'd be your extinguishers if there was a fire in it, and they, they've yeah. just been they've just been glued on. But everything else is pretty much as per the kit, apart from the roof and the actual uh, the the frame for it. That's a and really then, good job. Yeah, that's excellent. Okay. Yeah, no, I enjoy doing these sort of things because it keep, keeps it keeps the mind going. Um, yeah, so let's see what have we got now. Okay, um, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you've, you've got to, you've got to get the fuel out of the out, out of the rail cars. Need, yeah, right. Into a tank. So yeah. uh, the evergreen, uh, sorry, not the evergreen, the wall, this piping kit. Uh, I've used bits and pieces out of that. You know all their corners, angles, T pieces, elbows, whatever, yeah. and uh, built these up. The two pumps are just made out of six millimeter diamond styrene, and the cabinet again there, the or the electrical cabinet for the pumps, uh, that's made out of styrene as well. That I've just added to it, added the wheels, made the little fire hydrant there. So I, I have a little tip to add. Um, so Gary, what um, one of the things, one of the tips I would say is when you when you buy these Walther's kits and the they all come on a sprue, right? Um, and then the sprue frames, you can also save those sprue frames um, and use those as piping as well. Absolutely. Um, so don't throw anything away. Start saving your old sprues um, because you can use them for 
for piping and stuff like this. So I get to I get to have a, a tip for tonight. Um, maybe maybe a simple one. Um, I can't actually take credit for it. Uh, Luke Lemons told me that. So <laughs> yeah, are those are those handbrake wheels, or are uh, those actually or are those actually the wheels that come from the piping kit? Yeah, they're the wheels that come from the piping kit. Oh, okay. Yeah, so what I've done, I've supported all those pipes. You can see on the left-hand side there, there's a bracket. So that that pipe there where the where the uh, ground bracket is, that runs all the way down around along the siding. And then I've added two sections there, elbows, and uh, I've used heat shrink tubing for the hoses that run off to the, uh, to the rail cars. I, I think I have a photo, maybe. No, so... Well, they're, they're just connecting up to the main tank. There's just a pipe missing to the tank there itself. Hmm. Uh, yeah, cut a couple of bollards around to stop any vehicles running into the... Yep. Uh, okay. Oh, I spoke before about changing the, the design a little bit for the fiddle yard. Yep. And you can see what I've done there. I've just added that three-road fiddle yard in behind where I was going to have an industry. Um, so so that's, that's enabled me to, you know stage a few trains to to bring it out of the layout which is mm. yeah i mean that that's that's the thing i mean you can design a layout and you think yep that's brilliant then you start building you know, hang on one minute where am i going to store the trains and you know you have to revisit some of these things and hey you're best doing it before you actually uh knuckle down and start doing the scenery so luckily i <laughs> i did do that so and there's semi-finished fiddle yard that's i mean if if you didn't know any better you, you, right. you'd swear it was part of the scene well that's what i've decided to do is to to model it as being part of the scene as oh well. yeah yep so the wall on the left there is the actual back of the miami produce center which is only about two inches deep overall so you've, it's a really low relief building and i've actually finished off with uh that scale scene brick paper there that i printed out the ho scale yeah. and i've weathered up so basically I've, I've done a completely different texture to that wall so it looks like a different building from this side of the peninsula compared to the other side of the peninsula so the other side you've got the whole loading ramp you know the the awning or what have you this side slightly different yeah that's remarkable ha huh. um I wanted to be able to run around the train when I bring it in. So this whole section here with the little white fence around it is a drop-down section. Hmm. So I've got some drop-down brackets there, and I can lower, lower that down so it's out of the way, so it's not walk, uh, not in the walking area of the layout. But during operations, you just put it up, and uh, you can bring your train in, run your loco around the train, do, you, do your switching, you know, sort out your cars. Like so uh, everything's been scenic on this board too because it does form part of the layout, and I thought... Rather than have it non-scenic, it's right there in your face. You might as well scenic it. Yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, the, the visible staging, that's, you know, that's a an up-and-coming, I guess, trend you could say in model railroading is just having a basic, or well, in this case, not basic, but a well-scenic staging yard. I think mm -hmm. Thomas Klamoski talked about it as well, um, you know, in, in having functional negative space. Um, on your model railroads so this is this is fantastic gary yeah so yeah just uh, I, I i like to give everything a bit of a bit of scenery and all that you know just to yeah. you know, say, pretty it up or make it useful yeah certainly uh i know i know you guys have on on the on the uh facebook page have seen some of these photos previously and all that but uh this is an area between the produce center and those buildings i the corridor buildings and i just need to fill it in i thought okay a couple of tanks in there a couple of shipping containers what am i going to do so eventually i decided to put in some hard stand a little bit of bitumen area and i mm. built this up to construct a couple of tanks again they're the old i think they're from one of the fuel fuel oil or oil dealer welders kits that i had left over um rather than have them horizontal i decided to make them vertical the actual pipes that run down the side of the the tanks there are actually coat hanger wire because I couldn't, <laughs> I, I I just could not Any get the, the storm. Yeah, <laughs> just just couldn't get the uh, styrene rod to to bend as much as I wanted to. It didn't matter oh. how much hot water I used or stuck it in a microwave oven, you know, just to soften the plastic. I just couldn't get it to bend oh, to yeah. the right. So so coat hanger wire was the thing to use, and you can see down the base of the model, it's uh, back to the standard sort of Walders uh, piping kit. Yeah. 
So, yeah, lots of different mediums I use um, to, to build. It's a nice ladder cage there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So just Overlook all these little... That's, that's fantastic. Yep. And there's the finished tanks weathered up in situ. Very cool. Yeah, so all these little things, you know, the little details, because they're only a couple of inches in from the edge of the layout, I think, well, they've got to be detailed. You've got to, you've got to be able to see the detail, I believe, anyway. I, I look at it in a way that all our locomotives and rolling stock that we purchase from all these great manufacturers, they are so well detailed now. Our layout should be in the same uh same area of, of detail, I think. Yeah, same um, spectrum, so right? Same, same spectrum. That's right. So I, I, I try my best to detail everything up as much as as much as possible. Yeah. Now I know just recently, and it's been it's been featured in my recent YouTube video. Is that that area in the corner that you commented on previously, Andy? Um, yeah. It was dead space again, and I didn't know what to do with it. So. Again, jumped onto Google Maps, aerial view, street view, had a look at a few things, and this is where I got the idea for that. Wow. So that's so that cool. That's really cool. <laughs> that's very cool. Yep. So, yeah, like, like, like I've said all along through through tonight's show, that uh, Google Maps is your friend. Yep. So there's, there's, there's plenty, of, uh, plenty of things to see. And 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 utilize, inspire you to to create these little scenes on the layout. And it do, doesn't matter what area you're modeling, because Google Maps is everywhere. So uh, I yeah, mean, right. if, yeah, I mean, over where you are, uh, jump onto Google Maps. You can have a look. Okay, I need to I need to fill this corner up. Let's see what we got, and I'll go from there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that that's that's pretty much my modeling. Um, just a different view of the area, looking in from the street scene. Yeah. So give you a little plug here for your YouTube channel. Um, so you have, you have a detailed step-by-step um, -step on how you built this scene up on, on your YouTube channel, don't you? Pretty much so. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's uh, for, for those who joined late, um, the, the, you can check out Gary's modeling on YouTube at uh, Gaz or G-A-Z three eight zero one um that's his channel and he's got quite a few videos up there uh on on the construction of the layout uh, especially this scene this is his latest one so it's, it's turned out really well mm -hmm. uh, I, I try and cover the layout build on the youtube channel um from initial concepts and design right through to to what you see in the latest one which includes this this scene here um and what it does it does actually help other modelers out there you know i mean how to go about modeling something how to go about detailing an area um and and i've learned a lot from other youtube channels other modelers yeah. around around the world everywhere um and i like to share as much as they they share too you know like i said yeah. earlier in the, in the tonight's podcast we it's, uh, it's about the community and how good it is and how much we share so yeah. So, so how much of your layout of the layout is actually completed and seen it fully scenic no there gary it... yeah uh, good question um <laughs> the, the reason i say that is because a layout's never really finished right right you can you can always add those little details so i'd probably be around about the 80 percent mark hmm. wow so the... so with, the, with i'm sorry to interrupt but with that being said what's next okay just in my recent video my upload to youtube i talked about a different area that i'm going to detail and and uh add add to it because basically it's a chain wire fence and there's just a grass area behind it and it's a fairly large area if that was if that was real estate in miami you'd be worth millions so i need, <laughs> need to put something in there um yeah so i've, I've in, in, in the latest video, uh, it shows you what I have planned for that area. So that that should be done by the end of this month, hopefully. So I'm just going to slowly work on it and get it to where I want it. So I'm just waiting for a few more supplies to come in so I can start getting back into that section and uh, detail it up. That's pretty so, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. look, I, I, I enjoy the hobby. It's 
I, I think it's one of the best hobbies out there. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm sure everybody watching would agree too. You know, it's one of the greatest. Depending on the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you are, mean, right? or, you, or you see stuff like this, and like, oh, man, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Right. <laughs> we're done. Yeah. Andy and I, every once in a while, have that conversation where, where we yeah. just get frustrated. And it's gonna, like. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and tell them I'm going to be. I got to model the downtown spur now. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. So every, everything you see in that shot there, apart from the vehicles, um, is basically scratch built. I mean, the, the loads on the pallets you see there, uh, they're just bits that I've had in, you know, a, a, out of the spares drawer, you could say. So uh, mm -hmm. I've just opened the drawer up and gone, oh, I could use that and a couple of pallets and what have you. And uh, even the trees and the shrubs in the back there, they're, they're all uh, scratch built. Um, the little shrub there above the blue van and to the right of the truck there. Um, I mentioned Boomer and my friend Gormo from Great Chest of a Junction on YouTube. They both use a sizal rope to create mm. the, the bushes. Even those trees there are made out of sizal rope as well. So wow. uh, it's just the way you go about it. And uh, I don't think I've covered those trees in one of my videos yet, but uh, it's the same technique, you know, twist. I, Un untwining the uh the sizal and uh yeah creating the branch structure and moving your way up and then adding the 12 mil flock and yeah, just the textures yeah that's yeah. that's quite good thank you yeah okay so gary did you have anything else that you wanted to share with us this evening about the downtown spur oh look um not much more to share about the downtown spur itself. You know, I think it's, uh, it speaks for itself. You could say, um, as you know, I'm on your Facebook group and, and a few others that I share these photos and keep everybody informed as, as we all like to share our, our own yeah. works. Um, and I appreciate all the kind comments that people make, you know, um, it's, it's, it's great to see. And it's great, great to see other people's layouts on, 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 on your show and, uh, many other podcasts yeah. and, and, and the group so uh yeah lo love love to see the work and I, I get plenty of inspiration from all the other modelers and members out there around the world and uh yeah so we might have to have a part two with gary this is i think i think we will and we'll have to have a part two where we cover the other stuff that he's done yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i've but done I... a few other layouts yeah just some of just a couple. Yeah, the, yeah, there's not to. <laughs> I think we need to tease the audience here just a little bit. Um, in the in the pre-production show last night, um, there was some some stuff that was you know from around the world that that Gary has done, and it's just fantastic. So, um, we'll we'll I think I think if the if the audience would agree, I think maybe a part two should be in order. Chris Bell says part two. So yeah, I think that's yeah. I think that's good. So absolutely, I do want to I do want to give a, a mention to the to the section crew this evening. Um, we're carrying a hundred people still in the chat. Thank you again. Um, and before we break for our next segment here, um, and and get ready to close down the show, I do want um, I do want to put that out there to the to the section crew here. Um, if you have questions for Gary. Um, and, and anything that you've seen tonight, something that didn't uh, take real or didn't, didn't uh, you know, I guess uh, didn't marinate very well, make sure you get it in there because uh, Gary's more than happy to share. And speaking marinate. of sharing, um, let's say that's a, a teaser. This. There's a teaser right There's a there. There's a teaser yep. for part two. No more than that. That's <laughs> part two. No teaser. more than that. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. That's the cover photo for T for part two right there. Yeah. There's so, a lot to unpack in that one photo. <laughs> so this this one last night, this was the one where we were talking last night, right, Gary? This is, it is. just a, a brilliant scene that you've put together here. We talked and, for a half and, hour on this picture. <laughs> yeah, and, and where is this 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 is based in, in and where is this based? Uh, this is based in the UK. So it's a four millimeter scale modeling. Um look. The difference between four millimeter or double O scale and HO scale is just the size of the locomotives where, where all your track works identical. So yeah. uh, this this is actually based on somewhere in 
southwest of the UK, and it's just a small industrial layout that I built. Uh, it was a bit of a teaser. Uh, one of my mates on the forum who actually owns Platform One MRC, he's seen one of my other little ads and he goes, I reckon you'd do all right building an industrial zone. So I said, I'll give one a crack. So hmm. I, uh, I built this. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Wow. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if you, if you want to do a part two and showcase some of the other of the work I've done in the past, I'll be quite happy to. Yeah. Um, and then there is one there is one question uh, from C, uh, excuse me here, CA Customs. Mm -hmm. um, he says, the IPA and powder weathering techniques, did I miss that? Um, is that something, Gary, that you, um, I guess, uh, tend to do with uh, your rolling stock and, and – um, locomotives it is indeed yep uh in that photograph there that i've got up all the locomotives uh, are done with ipa and uh weathering powders okay uh, no airbrush touched it so, so i have got one youtube video there in my collection where i showed how i'd weathered uh, i think 44 gallon drums or barrels and uh other stuff to give that rust effect so uh if you go check out gaz 3801 you'll find the video on that there and uh yeah it, it's a very simple technique it's basically you know again the old uh clear mat oh, i use on, on the model yep clear yeah. and basically what the ipa does you, you go I, I charge me airbrush full of ipa and put on the powders then because you've got the clear mat down on the model itself when you spray the ipa on it actually softens the lacquer layer and your powders will absorb into that clear layer <laughs> and being ipa it evaporates and dries fairly quickly then you can dust on your next color and you can slowly build your weathering colors up and uh yeah it, it works well actually um from those locomotives Every, everything you see there is weathered with powders wow nice so that and and Bill Kenkel says that might be a part three um, <laughs> as well. So if you'll if you'll have us back, Gary, we'd love to to have you on the show for for a follow up if 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 you'd have us back. I mean, this has been fantastic. Uh, just some of the comments that are coming. Peter Tillman says outstanding. Kaylee Fay, awesome. And um, and then Bill Kenkel says, yeah, this is a little more than a crack at an industrial <laughs> layout. So. <laughs> Um, I think, I think, uh, I think, uh, you certainly have, have what the appetites of the section crew on, on your modeling. And I'm, and, and I'm sure that they'd, they'd love to see and hear more of you. So, um, yep. again, I do want to put that out there. Any, any comments or questions on, on the stuff that, um, that you, you've seen here tonight, get them up there in the chat. We're going to go through our next segment here, um, uh, which is, uh, the 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 what's on your workbench and Gary is going to be our special guest referee here um, yeah. and and he'll critique me on my public reading um, <laughs> and then we'll we'll award the dubious honor of workbench of the week so um, yeah I think oh and there's just a couple of good ideas before we get to all that uh, part three a could be a panel discussion on weathering with Boomer postmodern and Gary. Um, and, and maybe, and maybe wow. um, Paul Bell Bellamore too. I know he's. Uh, we got him coming up on a future yeah. show here, and he's got a really cool take. Um, the Green Bay and Western Lines is his YouTube channel, and he's got a really cool take on weathering too. So um, that'll be fun. I think, yes, the Green Bay route. Um, so I think Chris Bell has a, a fantastic idea. Part two, please. Um, Don Iris, great layout, Gary, uh, Pat, La Patrick Lavely, uh, fantastic show. And yes, I think I second that. So this could be a couple good ideas coming from the section crew here, um, to, for a follow-up show. So let's, uh, let's, uh, kick it over to the, the greasy meat hands band here for our final commercial break, um, to kick off our next segment. All right, it's time for what's on your workbench. Um, 
and this is the part of the show where we ask the section crew to go out to the second section podcast Facebook group and post photos of what's on your workbench. And the panel here will discuss, comment, and crack wise about what we see on screen this evening and award the dubious honor of what uh, workbench of the week. Um, and um, so tonight uh, we put the post up quite late, but there were quite a few entrants tonight. And Gary, if you'd be so kind as to um, hang out with us and, and go yep. through that. I'll do a final refresh button here on my browser, and we're going to go ahead and pull up the screen for the Facebook group, and you also get to hear me sing, oh, and that's man. fun too. No, it's not. <laughs> you you love it. You love it. Okay, bring on the taco sauce, as Thomas Chris would say. So, um, has anything come up on screen yet? Oh, yeah, there we are. Okay. So what's on the workbench tonight? Let's see here. We have 66 comments to get through. This is it's going to be the about average, right, yeah, right around. Yeah. Let's see here. So all right, that's uh, enough. Right away. All comments. All right. So I think I got read. Oh. Reed here, Reed Gaffey, he says, uh, slowly working on the bridge, got the ties and rail done, added some added some rocks and a bit more greenery. Yes, Reed's here tonight, if I do believe. Yeah, Reed's done really good on that layout. Um, that track yeah, across yes. the trestle is actually hand laid and what? it's engaged. Wow. Yeah, this scene's no, coming together. It is. This is well done. Wow. Let's see. And I think he's got one more here with a top view looking down. Wow, I can't wait to see this done. Reed, keep us posted on this one. This is this scene's turning out really good. I like the little looks like he's got like almost like an M, a maintenance away train there with the construction. That's cool. All right. Let's see here. Corey Bukowski. Uh, just got done decaling a central Minnesota and western X-184 bay window caboose in the great northern heritage paint scheme. Ooh, this looks wow. really good. This is some fantastic modeling. Oh, look at that. He's got the goat on the end walkway there. And, of course, we have to add details to the inside. Well, yeah. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't we? Well done, Corey. And then there it is, all back together. Is that looks like he's got some shades there? Oh man. Hmm. You'll have to let us know how if that's what you added there. Some shades in the windows, or if that's just playing tricks on me there. Good modeling, Corey. All right, here, Martin Coombs. Um, I've been weathering some skip wagons for the garden line. Oh, that's cool. This is incredible. Nicely weathered and bent up and what have you. Yeah. Great. Those look great. Oh, here we go here. I've also installed a bit of a full-size track and wagon in front of my wife's craft cabin. Uh, the garden line runs behind the craft cabin at this point. Oh, wow. That's pretty slick. Hmm. I wouldn't mind having one of those in the back, my, one of those little cabin things in my backyard. Make a good smokehouse. Yeah. Kaylee Faye says, I finished this one today, a kit bash laser cut. It's like Faye's Cafe. I wonder where she got the name. Hmm. Couldn't tell you. I don't know. <laughs> it's well she very good really work she does really awesome. good she's yes. awesome work and i appreciate uh, her sharing to the to the group and sharing her modeling with us and she's also i think she said she's she lives in germany and um stayed up with us tonight at four in the morning yeah so, thank you for doing that <laughs> yeah joseph uh, ginto here has a Lehigh Valley RS11. Uh, 
as the workbench is being packed up and moved to the new home. I've been weathering this RS11 for a client. I'm using acrylic paints, weathering powders for this project. It's turning out great. That looks really good so far. It does. Cool locomotive. This is the other side of it. Well done, Joseph. Let's see here. Oh, and here's Kaylee again. Just uh, jumped into the next one. Started in 2014. Got an ink wash and some paint. This one will be a quick one. Wow. Ooh, nice hardware store, it looks like. Yeah. I don't know how you guys can build these kits and models so fast. It takes me years just to get one done. All this is coming together pretty nice. I like the how the, the wash you can see in the panel lines there. That's good. All right, Paul Kassar. You may remember him from such shows as the last show. <laughs> um, <laughs> today, today uh, this engine shed will be getting an internal and external lighting. That's oh, awesome. Nice. Um, I'm excited to see that because the, the warehouse flat that he built with the lighting turned out really well. Oh, yeah. I'm excited to see it too. And I'll uh, be heading over there this afternoon to have a run yeah. on his layout. Yeah, so, once yeah. you get done with us, you'll be a, you'll be a, going over there. Mike Shanky fixing up a WSOR hopper kit after I have it fixed. I'll weather it. I even got out my new airbrush. I must be getting close to using it for the first time. Ooh. Mm. Bust it out. Bust yeah. it out. <laughs> Here we go. Justin Hendrickson. Well, the upstairs workbench is in absolute meltdown mode right now. I'm trying to clean it as I post this. This is beautiful. Yep. That's job well done, bud. I there's oh. a lot going on here. There's kits. It looks like a car there's, kit. There's model there's model car wheels there. Yeah, model they're, car they're, wheels. I like the the, the multimedia. Know. We have JB Weld <clears throat> in the back here. <laughs> this is important. Yeah. Um, because if you can't fix it with JB Weld, then it's really broke. Yep. Um, and, and it looks like he's working on a few kits here. So a lot of projects here. Looks like this is, some sprues that we're hanging on to. Yeah, I like this, Justin. This is a good, good looking workbench. Is there any taco sauce anywhere? I can't see any. Um, and I'm sure William Sampson is probably looking for a sound bite of where's the taco sauce? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good job, Justin. Here we go. San Juan and Southwestern O scale kit by Carolina Craftsman. Well, Those are nice kits. Nice. Mm. Yeah, they are. Well done. John Whithouse, he's a former Workbench of the Week winner, still working on the Kara Terminal, Terminal Railway layout. Unfortunately, it seems I may have fired my lower-level DCC district power booster. Expletive deleted. I'm sorry to hear that, John. That's always a bad day when your power booster goes or your command station goes. So good luck John's, to you there. John's the one that had the RS-23 at the uh, at the uh, retreat. Oh, that's right. Yep. Tony Dixon, uh, these two S-scale modernized hoppers. I like the yellow in there. Turned out yeah. well. I like the stenciling here, too. I don't know. That's probably a decal, but it uh, looks good. He's got some other stuff here. looks like he's working on as well. Some military model. Little, looks like a little Panzer Brigade leader here. Yeah. Started from a 3D print from the looks of it. Yep. Well done. Oh, and of course, trucks. Tony's good for a, a truck or two, right? Uh, Every once last, in a while. <laughs> yeah, on the last of the benches, a trio of 164th trucks for a co-op's LP um, liquid propane delivery service. Very nice. Tony is another dynamo. That guy, he is always pumping out models. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. Timmy Ellum Chapman. 
He's back here. This is interesting workbench he's got. Um, I see a steering wheel in front of him. Um, this is fantastic. And he's working on a Bar Mills N Scale Wicked Wanda's kit. Taco sauce front and center. Mobile, what's on my workbench this week? Wow. I think it's the first one we've had of those. First time we've ever seen the actual steering wheel, that's for sure. Yeah. Yep. Well, Place an auto attempt is at home. <laughs> yeah. I guess there are no rules with workbench of the week. You can have nope. I me mean, if you're on the road. Hey, give her. Yep. Let's see here. Andy Panette. Unfortunately, I'm 90 miles away from my workbench, but I but I can send you. Actually, I can't. All right. Well, Andy, <clears throat> take a tip from Timmy here. Um, bring the workbench with you or make a makeshift one. <laughs> Dan Pugach is working on a Walther's hole-in-one donut. Uh, he's renaming it a, as a bagel shop. Uh, uh, applied Crescent Creek model stucco. As I say, oh, that looks really good. That looks good. Well done, Dan. I like the stucco. One, one tip I learned off Boomer, how he uses his... Uh fine pumice gel is great for uh you know doing doing the walls and such like yeah. that for concrete concrete infill so uh yeah mm. that that looks fantastic what he's done here excellent yeah. work well done bill kenkel he was in the chat quite a bit tonight i've been working oh, yeah. on this titchy boom car kit added toolboxes a nice place to hide extra weight and <clears throat> windows to the kit Kept breaking the side steps, so I'll have to build some from 0.05 brass. It's a nice model. That looks Bill, really cool. Bill's workbench is uh, coming along nicely, too. I see multiple different bottles of adhesive, you know, different types of media. It looks like a one, one, two, three. one, two, three block there. Yeah, the one, two, three block, multiple hobby knives and tools. I mean, he still has space, though. I mean, we could probably get another yeah. kit right in yep. the foreground here. It's good stuff, Bill. Tim Moran, three-day build that was taken to an event this weekend. Oh, that looks cool. This is awesome. It's nice. That's kind of right up your alley, Andy. It is. This would be something that you would see on on a on a uh, next to a rail line in the northern Wisconsin in the in the upper yep. Michigan. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to have to borrow, quote unquote, borrow this. You'd even find that on Australian railroads too. Yeah, would you? Yeah, a lot of corrugated hmm. iron was used in, hmm. in our rural areas. Paul Scott August uh, built a church scene at my workbench, installed it on the layout today, still working on the sidewalk, parking expansion, and details. Paul is a good modeler. Oh, yeah. I like I like this scene. This is a classic Wisconsin church scene. It's got the little graveyard on the side. And let's see here. Scratched and bashed a bunch of telephone poles that installed them today. Cool. We talked about telephone poles on this episode. Yep. And then there's another one. Oh, I like how he did the... Hey, nice. The weathering here, that's yeah. the creosote, you know, how it builds up on the bottom of these poles. It's a nice touch. And then the sun fades them up high. Well done, Paul. All right. Oh, let's see here. One last one from Paul. Since the prototype removed the water tower in 1957, I'm working on installing the foundation support blocks and the center pipe that would have remained many years after the water tower was removed. Now, look at this. This is a cutting mat that has seen some action. Holy cow. Yeah, that thing is... Uh, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know how to exactly describe that. It's... Hmm. It's well uh, weathered. It, you got... Taco sauce. Looks like he's got some golden modeling paste here. Um, wow. 
problem um, like Boomer has on his stuff. Some super stuff, but... Yeah, it's good stuff. I got to get some of this golden modeling paste. Yeah, me too. Hmm. Chris Haddo, getting ready to weather the B&O boxcar, the Wabash, was done last week. The Wabash looks really good. That looked, that turned out really, really well. These are massive. I know, right? Uh, B&O car is kind of cool. With the, I always like that logo. Yeah. <clears throat> well done, Chris. Joe DeLuso uh, was working on Boomer-inspired wire trees before my accident, so everything is on hold for the foreseeable future. Yeah. And I know Joe had a, I guess we'll just call it a bit of a setback, and I know he's been tuned into the podcast, so I hope you you get better and you're on the mend. Saw some pictures and looked pretty scary, so I'm glad to see that you're upright and posting and still hopefully you're getting better soon. All right. Peter Moyle, greetings all. Today I have a mess on my workbench. What? <clears throat> well, you know. It looks kind of organized, actually. It's, it's an organized mess. I'm installing a TCS Wow Sound decoder and building a new shell for my Kato SD40. Oh, I see some glue. I see some taco sauce. I see some mark, some of the mark fit right there off to the left. Yeah. You know, something you don't see a lot of, I think we're going to see it a couple times, is a power drill. Oh. Um, here, doing a little foreshadowing. But yes, looking good, Peter. Paul Bukowski, I started building four more Chicago Northwestern cement hoppers. These cars. Send are... them to me when you're done. <laughs> Paul's modeling an S scale if you haven't picked up on that. Um, uh, and these cars are in the gray scheme and they're requiring a bunch of body modifications. Uh, when I'm finished, these cars will truly be unique as no others exist in S scale that I'm aware of. No. Well done. Not I yet. If they're anything like the stuff that he's done before, they're going to oh, turn out fantastic. So they're going to be gorgeous. This, yeah. Keep us yeah, posted, just, Paul. Yeah. Philip Dimmer, nice picture a cool of a dump truck. truck here. He's got one more with it here. So this is a rough printing some grain truck boxes. Oh, so he, he printed the box. Okay. Um, but I'm happy with my 3D model except for some mods um, to it to hold it to the bed for more printing. Had the corner lift on the rough test. Hmm. Hmm. Still turned out really good. Oh yeah. Bryce Olson building some pulp wood loads tonight. Been there, done that. Cutting those little logs is not an easy task. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a tedious process. Here we go. Luke Lemons working oh, on a Wisconsin parts. Southern engine. For Mike Shanky, turning a GP40 into a GP38, removing the center fan. A step drill makes quick work of removing the fan. They do. So, look at this. So he's he's got a special drill bit in here called a step, step drill. Um, a lot of electricians use it for doing like uh, knockouts and stuff and electrical boxes and stuff like that. Good for hollowing out um, radiator fans and stuff on locomotives. Nice job, Luke. Cool tip. Uh, let's see here. Loki Bilsma says workbench is full with a decoder install in a Fleshman steam locomotive. Ooh, it's the first time I think we've had one of those. We have not had one of these on the podcast as of yet. It's kind of neat. Really cool. He looks like he's doing ESU in that one. 
based yep. on what I can spy on the workbench. Keep us posted. Let us know what turns out. Mike Christensen, C and W R S eleven. 5251. Is that the number of the lone RS11? Um that the Chicago Northwestern had. 4251, I think. And here's a fun fact about that locomotive. It was also owned by another railroad uh previously that also had uh, CNW in its name. It was owned by the Carolina and Northwestern. So fun really? fact for everyone, yeah. So the RS11 was a Carolina and Northwestern C and W. Hmm. I'll show you a good fact checked on that. Uh, Brendan Horton worked uh, worked up some courage to weather this loco. Still in progress, but happy with the results so far. That looks good. It does look good. Yeah. I agree. It looks good, Brendan. I think uh, I think you're doing a great job. Keep it up. Mike Slater, I cleaned off the workbench, a.k.a. the layout. Trains are now running again. This, this is one of the projects, a flat car load of a CTA 6000 car. That's cool looking. I, I 3D like that. printed a tool to glue the wood guide rails for the wheels to rest on. Trying to see if I can finish this before the East Penn Trolley meet this May. Flat car car tie downs are yet to be done huh and then here's the tool that he printed what's this behind here mike what's that locomotive back there it looks like a rocket hmm we'll have to get some more information about that but well done mike was that the locomotive the general motors built yeah <laughs> yep yeah yeah the the hey. rocket rock island hmm. had uh, had yep. uh, what two or three of them, and I believe Boston and Maine. No, yeah, maybe. Was it one know. of the? I think there was one that went to a Minuteman service or something like that. I want to. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking. It's, an, it's cool. It yeah, there's a looking locomotive. That there's actually one of those at the National Railroad Museum in Green Bay. I think I noticed that. Yeah, here we are. Michael Shanky enjoying the show while using some taco sauce. Must have been on the hopper that he was talking about. Very cool. Outstanding. CA Fane, a few hours left making invoices and looking to see what I need for this round of pre orders and having a drink or having a maybe more drink. Those Happy look like Saturday. A Inventive models uh, couplers there, it looks like. Yes, it is. Yes. And the, and the uh, can of beer there, that's a nice touch, too. Um, <laughs> he, uh, CA yeah, the Aero Fane, Train. Yep. Yeah, Aero Train. Yeah. Um, he's got a, he's got an interesting little saying about Calgon. Uh, there was a commercial about how it, washed all your cares away so a little inside joke that he shares with us but yeah these inventive uh model couplers let him know he's putting in a big bulk order uh for them so if you guys need couplers make sure you hit up ca fane mike slater with another entry i know this is the second post um, but while the show has been going on, it inspired me to do a little work on the layout, adding a road. All right. Using concrete patch will be weathered with ink IPA wash to make it look like asphalt. That turned out pretty good, Mike. So far, yeah. Nice job. I like it looks like he's got some concrete forms here on the side, just like we're pouring a slab. All right. I think I think that got us through to the end here. That was wow. close to 29 minutes ago. So that's uh, what's on our workbench here. Thank you, section crew. Um, man, we got... Um, let me see here. Let me see. 
we we have to declare a winner of what's on the workbench. So we'll have to have a quick deliberation here to figure out back through the the photographs who's who's going to take the taco sauce this week. I don't know. I mean, Kerry, what do you think? Well, looking at the photos, Justin in the earlier photo there. I mean, his his bench was just there was no bench. <laughs> <laughs> it was just model upon model upon. Yeah, it, it was great. Uh, Peter Moyle's bench, that was great. And also uh, Mike Christensen with the logo rebuild, the RS11. Yeah. Um, I thought that was great. You know, they're probably my three pick. So I'll leave it up to you guys now. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. Oh, I, yeah. man, I'm never going to hear the yeah. end of this if I say this. Uh, Justin's is, I, I, yeah. All right. Let's, okay. Listen. Let me do this, okay? Okay, Mike, you go <laughs> ahead because I think you, I, I think you can just say my vote for me. Yeah. Okay, Justin. If I hear any more tomorrow about this, <laughs> I will deny it, even though it's on <laughs> air and recorded. You win the workbench of the week. Congratulations, Congratulations. Justin. Congratulations. Well done. You earned it. Yep, nicely done. Yeah, the JB Weld actually is what that's tipped, what that's the JB that Weld is actually yeah. version of Voltron. So there yeah. was the <laughs> Voltron Vol, when we had the Voltron on there, that was good. Yep. And then, um, yeah. but yeah, that's this was this was good, Justin. So congratulations, you are uh, are now on the prestigious list of what's on your workbench winners. Um, I think, yeah, I think Mike, Mike, the next time that we see Justin, he owes us a speech. So no, um, please let's not. <laughs> so congratulations. <laughs> and I want to thank all the people out in the section crew. Uh, you know, we're over uh, hour three here uh, into in an hour into hour four. You guys have stuck with us. We got 87 people uh, closing down the shop with us tonight. So thank you for sticking with us on the, uh, what's on your workbench and posting and sharing. It's fantastic to see what all you guys are and gals are working on. It's just truly amazing. The community that we've developed and, you know, make sure you're sharing it with your friends. If someone doesn't know about us, uh, tell them to check out the second section podcast and, and check out the, the Facebook group. It's turning into a nice uh, fun community, sharing a lot of good modeling ideas. And it's just, just the cool cool thing that has been created here. So thank you all for participating in that. Gary, it's been um, a fantastic ride this evening. I am truly impressed with, with your modeling um, and, and the content that you shared with us this evening. Do you have any, any final notes or um, words of wisdom that you want to impart with us in the section crew before we adjourn for the evening yeah look words of wisdom it would be uh don't be scared to have a go yeah. jump in don't jump in with all guns blazing jump in with some uh methodical thoughts and attack your layout methodically don't don't uh attack it haphazardly you know think and think about what you're doing uh even if you have right steps down uh, on what you want to achieve. Sometimes I do that. I, I look at the layer and go, okay, where am I up to? Right, I've got to do this, and I'll write myself a little list. That always helps. But um, don't be afraid to have a go. Jump in. Um, try things. Try new techniques. Try your hand at scratch building, kit bashing. It's amazing what you can do. Once you do it the first time, you think, hey, that wasn't too bad. You can always move on from there and uh, keep developing your skills. I look, it's the, only, it's the only way we can develop our modeling skills is by having a go. So yeah. uh, that's my bit. One thing I will add, um, a good friend of mine who printed some of the batteries, truck batteries, mm. HO scale that I've got on the layout. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he's actually sent me a whole bag load. So I'm going to say the first, I'll say the first five people that PM me via second section uh, Facebook page, I'll send you all out a dozen. So the first five people. Um, I'll mail them across to you. You can add to your layout. So if you want some little HO scale truck batteries, jump on and uh, send me oh, a PM. Oh, thank you very section. much, Gary. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Thanks, Gary. Yep. So uh, I'll, I'll do that because 
my friend down here in Victoria, Philip, he can't sell them because he's printed them off a one of those sources where you can't on sell. So, uh, but won't stop me from giving a few away to some of the modelers over there and uh, even here in Australia. So, yeah, and uh, I appreciate all the comments that have popped up on the on the uh, private or on the chat here. You know, uh, fantastic, and thanks again for all tuning in. Yeah. Um, special shout out here to, to Peter Tillman, uh, for the, the super, uh, chat here. Uh, thanks very much for that. Yeah, um, very much. <laughs> yeah, that's outstanding. Um, and Peter, you've been a, a fantastic, uh, fan of the show and, and tuning in from Singapore. That's, that's pretty, uh, remarkable. So thanks again, yeah. uh, for the support and, uh, truly appreciate it. So um and thanks for all the good comments and questions too it's fun having you in here that's for sure um so mike any 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 closing thoughts here before we adjourn for this for the evening before we tie down yeah real quick you know this has got to be the first time that we've ever actually had this medium discussed mm -hmm. um to this length i think it, it's been mentioned in passing a couple of times i believe mm -hmm. but never taken to this level and it's just it's inspiring actually to see you know that the the card the cardstock medium being able to look so good and i mean i know i'm going to date myself i know i know but all, i'm going to date all three of us Remember how it says, "It's <laughs> is it real or is it Memorex?" Remember that? Yeah, Remember right. Those yeah. commercials. That's what. That's all I kept on thinking about is the fact that man, you would never know that that is paper, you know, or cardstock. I mean, you would never know it by looking at it, and and it's just inspiring and in another medium to and another rabbit hole, like Thomas Gazer always likes to say. You know, we're going yeah, right. down all these rabbit holes, and. uh you know, it's I Gary. Thank you very, very much for bringing that all to the forefront like this. It's not only is your modeling incredible, that just that whole all the building tips and stuff like that is just incredible tonight. So yeah. thank you very, very much. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Um, look, everything that I've learned and I've employed on my layout, I've learned from the greater community. So um it's it's just a great you know great hobby as i've always said yeah <laughs> i agree great people yeah so and again thank you gary for coming on this evening and again thank you section crew it was a fantastic show this evening um fantastic really amazing questions and participation it was you guys are you guys rock and and you you make this show what it is so um Gary, I think we're going to have to do a part two if that's okay with you. I don't mean to put you on the spot, oh, yeah. but um, you've you know, been a fantastic guest. And I personally have taken away a ton of <laughs> valuable information. And so I have more notes in my notebook. I was scribbling down as, as we were going through the presentation this evening. Remarkable. Your modeling is top drawer. And I just, it, it's been an absolute blast having you on the show. Oh, thank you kindly. Yeah, yeah. So Look, I, I'd like to see. Sorry, I'd like to see a part yeah. three so I can get that jacket. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. So um, yeah, right now we've we're we're in the works right now um, with the the five timers club, right? Um, yeah. So well, five times, not three. Yeah, yeah. five times. But, <laughs> yep. but yes. Um, so it's it's a it's going to be fantastic. We'll we'll have we'll get you on five times, and then we'll get you the jacket. Yeah. It'll, yeah. it'll be it'll be it'll be easy. So. Um, Thank you, everyone, again, for, for showing up tonight. Um, I do have a question. Mike and I were talking yes. about it. Um, Saturday show, is it? how's it work out for you? Let us know. Um, either comment after the show is over or head over to the Facebook group. Let us know how the Saturday show worked for you guys. You like it better than a Tuesday? Um, you know, if we have to, we, you know, do a few more shows on Saturday. Um, and then we're also talking about doing some European friendly shows as well. Um, you know, being on earlier for them so that they don't have to stay up until the next day. So, 
a um, couple of people already said Saturday is better. So, yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to tie down for tonight's section crew. Truly appreciate um, all the participation. Gary, phenomenal job tonight. It was, you knocked it out of the park. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. So we'll talk to you guys next uh, couple weeks. And I think we have, uh, I forget who we have on next. Is it Paul? We have Paul on in a couple of weeks. It'll be a good show. So Saturday was great. I think I think we got a I think we got a, a, a trend here. So we'll have to yep. seriously consider. Um, let's seriously consider having that that Saturday show. All right, section crew. Gary, thanks everyone. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night, people.